Hi everyone and welcome to my live creative time today. My name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Paper Craft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. I am so excited to be here today. I have got a lot to share with you and um, some fun things to play with. So, some fun brand new things to play with. Um, so thank you all for joining me today, whether or not you are watching live or watching on the replay. So this is a live recording. If you are watching the replay and you want to bypass all the chit chat, feel free to fast forward. However, you might miss some fun stories if you do that. So, but that is totally up to you. Um, but you have the option of doing that if you are watching the replay. Um, if you're watching over on YouTube, when I upload this to YouTube, be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, you'll find the subscribe button down below the video. And there's also a little bell icon there as well. If you click on that, you can choose how you would like to be notified when I upload new videos. Um, and if you're watching over there on YouTube and you're not yet following me over here on Facebook where I am filming this, feel free to come over to my Facebook page and, uh, and look for me over there. You'll find me at Mandy Witherby Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator, um, Australia. And uh, that's where you will find me there. I'm also on Instagram and I have a blog and all those things. So I'm everywhere. You'll find me everywhere. <laughs> so as you're jumping on, say hi. Let me know that you're here and if it's your first time, where you are watching from. Alrighty, now while everyone's jumping on, let me call this live stream up on my other devices so that I can see all of your lovely comments there. So bear with me and I will bring that up on my computer over here and also on my iPad because usually one or the other of them will play up. So I always have both of them running just to be sure. There we go. Okay, my iPad is all good and we've got some friends jumping on. Hello, hello everybody. Alrighty. Hi, Roz. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Brenton. Great to have you all with me today. We're going to have some fun today. We are going to play with some brand new product. I'm going to um, share some brand new product that I just received last week um, from the upcoming new mini catalog. And we're going to have a little play. I like to call it my new catalog, uh, my new product playground. So we're gonna have a little play and see how some of these products work. Um, we're not creating an actual full project today, but we will have a little play with some of these products and see how they work, what they look like, and all of those fun things. So um, get ready for that. But before we jump in, let me know how your weekend was. And guess what? I forgot to make my cup of tea. I had the kettle boil, well actually my daughter boiled the kettle for me. Um, I called out to her to do that for me and then I forgot to race out there and make it, but that's okay. I've got my water, so water will have to do today and I will have to have my cuppa afterwards. Um, so yesterday, was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday, um, you might have seen I posted some of my new tea um, products. I went to tea too and I got myself a new, um, some more tea, some more French Earl Grey tea. I know Brenton loves French Earl Grey as well. We were talking about that yesterday. Um, and I got a new tea strainer for my loose leaf tea and also one of the little, um, I don't know what you call them, but they've got like a reverse grip handle and they've got two little, um, well, semicircles, I suppose, and they open and you put the tea leaves in them and then when you release the handle of the um, tea thingy, you probably saw it in the photo, um, then it closes and holds the tea and then you put that in your tea as your tea strainer um, with loose leaf tea. So I got one of those as well because at different times I use the different ones depending on um, what is clean usually, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> What I haven't used that day or for the previous cup of tea, if I haven't um, cleaned it out. Um, yeah, infuser, that's the word, Roz. Thank you, infuser. Yes, yes, that's that's what it was. Um, so, yeah, so I will, uh, I used my new Pretty Rainbow one for the first time last night. Um, I had bought one of those ones for a friend of mine last year, I think it was, at Christmas time, and she really, really loved it. And um, ever since I bought her one, I thought, oh, I really want to get one of those. And the two um, the two tea strainers that I have, or infusers that I have, um, the older ones, um, the bigger ones that fit inside your cup, 
they were, I've had them for a long time and they were getting pretty scungy and they get really hard to clean after time. So I thought it's time to get rid of them and get some new ones. So I, um, yes, so I did that. So I got the pretty rainbow one like my friend has as well. So yeah, so that's exciting. So how was everybody's weekend? I had a great weekend this weekend. Did some fun things for change rather than just being at home all weekend. Um, yes, so you might have seen me post about some of those on social media. But on uh, Saturday night, my daughter and I went to a performance. Now, I haven't been to a live performance since before COVID because we're still quite careful about, you know, going out in crowds and things. But we just went with our masks on and we weren't the only ones. There were quite a few there that we saw that had masks on. So that was good. Um, and the reason for that is because I'm chronic asthmatic, so my lungs are quite weak. So yeah, so that's why I just we just have to be careful and um, protect my lungs pretty much. So yeah, so we went to that performance and that was amazing. It was a dance performance. Um, have you ever heard of So You Think You Can Dance and Dancing with the Stars? So some of those dancers were there performing, which was amazing. Almost all of them had been on either one of the shows or the other. Um, and also there was Mitch Tambo, who is the Aboriginal um, singer who performed on, now let me get it right, um, Australia's Got Talent in 2019. I got pulled up for that this morning because my daughter said, Mum, you posted the wrong thing. <laughs> so I had to, had to rectify my, uh, my post, but yes, and he was amazing as well. So he sang some of the numbers and there were other um, singers and live musicians as well that were playing um, for the dancers to dance. And oh my goodness, they can move. Oh, they dance so fast. I don't know how they don't injure themselves. I mean, I'm sure they do get injuries, but um, in fact, I know that they all do get injuries from time to time. But oh my goodness, I would love to be able to move like that. And it was really, really wonderful. And my daughter in particular loves dance. So she loves watching dance. She doesn't dance herself anymore. She did when she was younger, but um, but she loves watching dance. So um, usually her and her sister go, but now her sister is in Queensland. So uh, yeah, so instead she took mum and mum really, really enjoyed it. <laughs> so yeah, so that was really awesome. It's called... Um, um, burn the floor the performance is called burn the floor did anybody else see it they were performing all around um australia and their last show was last night and they were in chatswood or somewhere i think amber said yeah so they were dancing all over the place but they've been all over you know up in queensland down in um i don't know did they go to victoria they probably did go to victoria if amber's on here she'll probably tell me um but yeah, so they were they dance all over the place, but um, they're mostly. So this was an Australian one, and so all it was all Australian music, all Aussie Australian music, and a lot of the '80s hits as well as some of the more recent stuff. But yeah, a lot of '80s hits in excess: Jimmy Barnes, John Farnham, um, uh, ACDC. Um, yeah, a whole heap of really great hits. Like it was awesome. It was really, really cool. And some more recent um, Australian music as well. So it was really, really good. But anyway, so that was that. Was that. And um, that was my weekend. So, yeah. So what did everybody else do? Did anybody else do anything exciting? Share with me in the comments if you did. I'd love to hear about it. So you might notice today that I have these gorgeous um, starfish earrings. And what you probably can't see, because I'm probably sitting a little bit low, is if I tip my camera down a little bit, let me see. Look at my beautiful little brooch, my little seal brooch. Isn't he just adorable? He is super, super cute. So I have a little bit of a story. <laughs> so, um, I love telling stories. Um, but this little seal, he signifies um, something, which I'll tell you in a moment. Um, but... I have just discovered wearable art. Oh my goodness, why did I not discover this beforehand? So my mum was a brooch lover. My mum always wore brooches. Um, she liked co like costume jewellery, beaded necklaces, 
Um, mum didn't have pierced ears, so she she would wear clip-on earrings, but she always had lovely, you know, um, clip-on earrings and but brooches. She loved brooches and beaded necklaces and things. So anyway, I never really got it. I think I had a couple of brooches when I was little, and you know, I have Christmas brooches and things like that I put on at Christmas, but never realized that there's actually a whole um culture out there or a whole community out there of brooch collectors and the oh my goodness i just discovered these last week and i am hooked oh my goodness i can't stop looking at brooches now and matching earrings and all the rest of it so i have my um my um starfish earrings to go with my it's actually not a seal. It's a sea lion. It's an Australian sea lion brooch. And it's beautiful. It's, um, it's, the brand is Erstwilder. And I, something just popped up the other day on Facebook and I'm like, oh, it piqued my interest because it was marine animals. And my daughter loves marine animals. My daughter in Queensland, because as a lot of you know, that's what, that's the industry she works in. So that piqued my interest and I love them. I love animals as well. So um, then, of course, I was looking at the collection and oh, my goodness, that just opened up a new, like a whole heap of new doors and windows <laughs> and everything. Oh, my goodness. There's so much out there. So I bought a few. So you'll see them pop up different themes. So I have some um, there's different different companies put out different collections and but they're collectibles. So this particular company, Erstwilder, they're um, and I'm not. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, shape, or form. I've just discovered them. Um, but they put out new collections every a couple of times a month, about two times a month, apparently. And the last two collections happened to be just ones that really spoke to me was the sea, the Australian Sea Life. And the one before that was, um, oh, I forget what it's called, but it was all like crocheting. Now, animals, of sea, life, sea animals, of course, is my daughter. Crocheting, of course, reminds me of my mum. So all of the, the brooches that I've bought kind of tell a story for me. So with um, the sea lion, um, because my daughter works in that industry, um, you'll see a few different... She doesn't work with seals predominantly, but she did used to um, volunteer at Taronga Zoo working with... Um, the seals which she loved and she wanted to get a job with the seals but she was never successful in that area um, but she she works with other marine animals um, but her friend works with seals and uh, and I love seals and they're just so beautiful and my daughter has some beautiful photos taken with big sea lions uh, big big seals or sea lions I'm not sure to be honest I'm not sure which one is which I think the ones she's got photos with were seals um, yes, but when I saw this one, I'm like, oh my goodness. And the colors in it are just gorgeous. And it's, um, they're, um, acrylic resin, resin, I think. Um, but they're, they're, um, specially designed. And this one is a collaboration with a guy called, um, oh my, Pete Cromer, Pete Cromer. He designs, um, some of this wearable art. Anyway very exciting and so i had to get the the um the cute earrings to match so yes so that's a that's a new thing you'll see you'll see me wear some of my brooches on some of my lives <laughs> um because i love anything animals as well and um, yeah wearable art why not like i love being creative i love um i'm not so much into fashion and that sort of thing i appreciate fashion and I love looking at patterns in fashion and I get a lot of creative inspiration for my cards and my paper craft through fashion. Um, but I'm not really a fashionista, but wearable art. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so, yes. So this little this little um, sea lion, I think I'll need to give him a name. Um, haven't I think maybe Sammy, Sammy the seal or something. I don't know. I don't know, but he's very, very adorable and so much color in him and design and yeah, just really amazing. So anyway, so that's a little bit about my brooch and my earrings. Um, but uh, let's move along. Um, so let me tell you a few things that are happening. So um, I have got a paper share coming up because we've got the new mini catalog launching and we're going to be looking at um, some of the products from that. So there's my 
my already banged up <laughs> mini catalog with a, a few extra things on my wish list which I haven't got yet and I know that wish list is going to grow but yes we have got oops of course new papers that are coming out in that catalog and so I'll be doing a paper share like I always do with every new catalog and it gives you a sampling of the new papers in the um, the new catalog so that you can then discover your favorites and then you can purchase more of those that you love but it gives you a lot to play with so we've got um, one two three four five six seven eight in fact I've got two paper shares I've got the designer series paper shares and there's eight different paper packs in that paper share. And then I've also got the specialty paper share as well. And in the specialty paper share, there are one, two, three, four, five different um, specialty papers in that paper share as well. So you can choose either or, or you can choose all of them and get all of them together. Um, and then I will package those up, ship them out to you, etc., etc. Now, at the moment, um, I've got the registration forms ready. I'm not taking payment just yet, though. I'm taking payment a little bit closer to the time when it's going to be available. Um, but you can register now. So what I will do is I will pull up the registration form. Oh, my goodness. Did I save that? Let me just think. Mm, uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. Let's see. Gee, so organized today, aren't I? <laughs> All right, I've got a class coming up too. I do have the registration form for that one. Um, where did I put the registration form for? Hmm. Catalog request, mini catalog request, if you would like to request a catalog. Um, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Australia or um, you haven't ordered from me in a while and you would like one of the um, mini catalogs, then I do have a um, request form so you can request a catalog and I can send one out to you. But in terms of the, um, hmm, okay, let me pull it up. I'm going to pull up the registration form um, for the mini catalog. Oh, no, 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 not that one. Where is it? It's the paper share. So I will be advertising the paper share later um, this evening or this afternoon after my live. Um, and all the details will be there with the link and everything. I just haven't pulled up the link yet. So I'm just going to grab that right now. All right. So I've got that. I'll pop that in the comments. Sorry, a bit disorganized. <laughs> There's been a lot going on. I'll put it in the comments. Um, I better give you a title. Um, let's see. Mandy's mini oh i can't spell in a hurry catalog paper share and i'll put the link there did i spell that right yep yeah. there we go okay it's in the comments of my live video right now um i will i will put it in my link tree with all my other links as well um i haven't done that yet but i will do that before i advertise it this afternoon so it'll be there and it'll be um, in the description of this video both here on Facebook and on YouTube um, when I finish filming so um, yeah so be sure to check that out there are lots and lots of beautiful papers both um, we're going to look at some of those today I've got a few of the paper packs today um, we'll look at a few of those I don't have them all yet but you know in time I will and um, yeah, they're just absolutely stunning. So you'll want to get your hands on those. Um, okay, so that's the paper share. Next we have, um, now I've got a class. So the Botanical Prints card class. Thank you to those of you who have already registered for that. Um, the registration's closed tomorrow. The link, um, I can pop the link up in the, um, in the comments in a moment. Um, but also to the link will be in the description of this video here on Facebook and over on YouTube as well. But this is a beautiful class using some of the products from the annual catalogue. Um, and they're just, there's a little, a little sneak peek of the projects there. There's going to be five beautiful projects, including a fun fold card. We always try to include a fun, fun fold card in my classes. Um, and there is an option for those of you who might live outside of Australia as well. If you would just like to purchase the PDF tutorial, um, there's an option there for you as well. 
So be sure to check that one out and register. Um, register registration and payment will need to be made by um, the end of tomorrow, Tuesday the 15th. So let me grab that link. I'm so excited today. There's so many things, so many things. All right, I'll just put that up here as well in the comments. Thankfully, my computer is behaving itself. I had to do a restart of my computer today because last night everything was just going so slow and I thought, well, I haven't actually redone a proper restart for a while, so I probably should do that. You know, I just shut the lid so that the next day I open the lid and everything else, everything that I was working on is still there and still open, but not really good for, you know, sometimes it needs to reset itself. It's a bit like us when we go to bed, isn't it? <laughs> we need to reset ourselves. All right, so that is the class. And the other thing I wanted to remind you of is that Stampin' Up! has still got the kit sale going at the moment. So all of the kits in the kits collection are discounted up to 30% um, until the end of August. Now, I've been trying, to, been trying to put together a kit event that those of you that purchase kits can come and join. Um, but I've had so much else going on that I haven't advertised it yet. And I've had other things to advertise as well with, you know, things going on. So what I'm thinking is I will um, schedule something for the beginning of September. So if you purchase your kits with me um, in my online store between now and the end of um, August, then on the 9th, is it the 9th I said? The 9th of September, so I'm moving it from the date that I originally had in my mind. The 9th of September, we'll get together and we'll have a kit evening together. It'll just be a fun um, evening. You can bring along your kits. We'll do it via Zoom. And um, so you can kit in the luxury of your own home. You can have your jammies on if you want to. So, um, yeah, so we will do that. So look out for that. But grab your kits now while they are... Um, on sale and you'll save yourself some money and remember those of you who are demonstrators you get your um, demonstrator discount on top of that as well so that's an added bonus and added discount which is super awesome so yes yeah, 10 10 to no up to 30 percent discount on all of the kits and all of the stampin up kits are all inclusive kits everything that you need is in them um, the only one is the wreath, which I don't know if you can see if I tip my camera up a little bit. The wreath up there on, oh, where are we going? Up there. There. <laughs> the wreath up there. You just need either some tacky craft glue or a hot glue gun for um, for that one. But it's a beautiful, beautiful project. I um, did that one on a Facebook Live a few weeks ago um, or a couple of months ago. I've lost track. I don't know. The time has just gone. But yeah, that's a beautiful one as well. But so long as you've got some tacky craft glue or a hot glue gun, you're good to go with that one. Everything else, it's got everything in there. Um, they all come with adhesives. Um, you just might need some paper snips to snip some of the ribbon and twine. Um, and that's about it. Yeah. So, alrighty. Well, I think we should get on to playing with some of the new products. Are you ready? Okay. So um, I'm going to cover up the camera and tip it down onto my desktop so that I can show you all of these beautiful products um, and then we can get going. Now, these products are um, currently available to demonstrators, uh, but customers can get them from the 6th of September. Now, we're still a few weeks out or a couple of weeks out from the 6th of September. And you might be wondering why I'm showing these products so early. That is because, one, to get you excited for them. Two, so you can start your wish list ready for when the catalogue launches and be all prepared. And three, if you don't want to wait until the 6th of September, you can join Stampin' Up! if you're not already a demonstrator and you can get these products right now in your starter kit. Um, and then you get an ongoing discount to complete your wish list after that. So there you go. Um, to join my team, uh, to join Stampin' Up, it's only $169, but you get to choose $235 worth of product in your starter kit. You get free shipping on that starter kit order. And then you'll get an ongoing 20 to 25% discount on all of your Stampin' Up! products. 
Um, now you don't need to sell product. You can simply purchase the products for yourself. There's no lock-in period, so you don't need to stay for any designated time. You can leave whenever you're ready. Um, what else? So you don't need to sell. You don't need to. You don't need to do videos or hold classes or hold workshops or anything like that, um, like I do. Um, I choose to do that. You don't have to. That's all good. Um, we have a lot in our team that just purchase for themselves, and I am so happy that they can do that. We have a beautiful community in our team. Um, we have a lot of fun together. In fact, in just how many days? What are we, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, five more days. We've got our first team all day in-person retreat. It's a crafting retreat and um, we are going to have such a great time and it's open up to my um, wider team, so my entire team. So super, super fun. So we do all sorts of fun things together. And we do gather together online each month as well. And uh, for a team gathering, I do recognitions for our team. Um, we have creative challenges for those that want to participate. I give prizes and awards. And, um, and then we have some crafting time together each month as well. So super, super fun. Um, but yeah, this big retreat on the weekend is uh, a full day. So it's been um, a lot of preparation, but it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be so much fun. So I'm so excited. It's going to be a big week. So anyway, all right, let's get um, ready for that. Uh, if you see any of these products, um, sorry, first of all, let me backtrack. If you have any questions about joining my team, um, please feel free to get in contact with me. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions so that you can make the, the uh, decision as to whether or not that is the right thing for you. Um, I'm one to always want all the, the want to ask all the questions and know the ins and outs of everything. So I totally get that. And I don't mind answering your questions at all. So feel free to get in contact, but we would love to have you come and join our team um, and our fun crafting community. So please feel free to, uh, to get in contact with me uh, for that. Now in my links, which will be in the description of this video, Actually, I'm going to put them in the comments right now too. My link tree with all of my links there, um, except for the paper share. I will add that later today. That's not on there yet. Um, but you can actually, if you've already made the decision, you can just click on my join button there and it takes you straight through to my join page. Um, so you'll find that and all of my other links there, including my shop link if you want to shop. But remember these mini catalog items they're available now if you're a demonstrator or from the 6th of september if you are a customer and uh, be sure to use my host code all right so let's get started i'll cover up the camera and tip it down onto the desktop so we can start playing with some of these new products all right here we go i'm going to cover it up so you don't get dizzy here we go and we'll transition the camera Squeaky. See, I have to, I have to, um, the squeak is a good thing because it means that I've done the clamps up super duper tight. So hopefully nothing will move during filming. Alrighty. Now let's see how that looks. Not sure if I've got it too close or too far away today. We might have to do a little bit of rejigging as we go because I'm going to be showing you some things and we need um, like a wide wide view today oh I got it straight pretty well the first time um, so let's put the catalog there and we'll see how much space that gives me oh I think we'll be okay actually yeah okay I think that's a good height all right so these products will be available in my online store as I said from the 6th of September um, you can find my shop two ways, either via my blog, which has um, other creative um, content there. So you might like to go and have a look there. Or you can go to my Stampin' Up! website, which is mandywitherby.stampinup.net. This host code here, this is my August 2023 host code. Um, so if you're shopping for other products that are not from this catalogue um, this month in August 2023, you can use this host code. From September, when this when this catalogue goes live, I will have a different host code because I set up a new one at the first of every month. 
Okay, now I can't show you the inside of this catalogue just yet until it goes live on the 6th of September. We're not allowed to show you the inside until then. So I can only show you the pretty front cover, but I can show you the... Um, the products, the live products. So I had to put a little bit of sticky tape on mine because when mine, when my catalogue arrived, my postie folded mine and shoved it in my letterbox, which I was not impressed about, and it tore the cover. So I do have a brand new pack of catalogues, but I haven't yet opened them. Um, but I need to do that, and then I'll, I'll get a, a nice pristine copy for me to show on screen. All right, so I'm going to keep my catalogue off to the side because I can't um, share the inside with you yet. So I need to keep that out of sight. Um, but I've got a few things to share with you. So the first, I'm going to share with you um, a couple of the sweets first that I purchased. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight sweets in the new mini catalogue. Um, I've just got two of them at the moment and some of the others I might get along the way. Um, but the first one I want to show you is um, a non-Christmas um, product, a non-Christmas, um, sorry, yeah, well, non-Christmas sweet. So in the mini catalog, we've got some um, Christmas products. We've got some um, seasonal products, um, such as this one, which I would call a seasonal product because it's sort of um, autumnish. It's yeah, it's it's non-specific. Like it's not a Christmas one. It's for any any season, any occasion. Um, just yeah, beautiful, beautiful imagery. And yeah, so um, there's also if you celebrate Halloween, there's Halloween um, products in there too. I don't celebrate Halloween, so I don't ever buy those ones. Um, or show those ones, but you can see lots of those online elsewhere. Um, yeah, so I'll just be showing you the Christmas and the the, um, the sort of seasonal products today. Some of, not all of them. All right, so this is the um, All About Autumn Suite. And as you can see, there are lots of products in this suite. So I will show you, first of all, the stamps and dies. Oops. The stamps and dies. So this is a big suite, actually. This has got um, this one's got a lot of product in it. Um, so we have got the autumn leaves stamp set. Now this is a special stamp set. This is a, a one million achiever stamp set, and this is Amy Coender's um, stamp set. And I love Amy. She's such a beautiful person, and um, she does beautiful work as well. Her um, designs are very crisp and clean and um yeah she just she just makes beautiful projects so if you haven't seen hers she's in the usa um uh texas i think i think she's in texas or was in texas i think she's still in texas um but yeah check her out uh, amy coenders k-o-e-n-d-e-r-s i think that's right hey julie how you going great to have you with us um, now we've got some beautiful sentiments on here with different fonts, um, which is really cool. Uh, different occasions. We've got I'm thankful, with a grateful heart. Autumn teaches us that change can be beautiful um, for all you do. So you can add that um, to one of these. I'm thankful for all you do, with a grateful heart for all you do. We've got today and every day. And to have you as a friend. So I guess they're more, these two are more sort of, you know, thanks, thank you um, sentiments. And then this one is just a beautiful um, sentiment that you could use for anything. The images on here are shown at 80%. So when I open up the stamp case, you'll see that the images themselves or the stamps themselves are much larger than the front cover. So that's if I line that up, you'll see the difference there between the stamped image and the actual um, case image. Oh, sorry, the stamp and the actual case image. So they're quite a lot larger, they're really, really big. They're a photopolymer stamp set, which means um, they're clear, so you can see through to line them up, which is always great. And these two, these stamps here, these three stamps here, they're sort of like distinctive. Actually, does it say on the front that they're distinctive? No, just says two-step. But they do sort of seem a bit distinctive. They've got like that shadowing um, detail in them. Really beautiful. 
It is a two-step stamp set because you can stamp the stamp itself and then you can stamp the details as well. Okay, so we might have a little look to see how that works in a moment. Then we've got the coordinating dies. These are the autumn leaves dies. We'll open these. Oh, you watch Amy all the time, Julie. That's awesome. Stamp with Amy K. That's it. Yes. Um, oh, she's in New Jersey, is she? Sorry, I must have been thinking of somebody else who's in Texas. New Jersey. Okay. Thanks for that, Amy. Uh, Julie. So there you go. Um, yeah, and then these dies are gorgeous. They coordinate with the stamped images. And then you've got all these extra little pieces. So you've got extra little branch pieces, extra leaves. Um, got these fantastic border dies. Uh, sorry, frame dies. I love these. And then this one here is like a, um, and this one here, they're like a stitched detail. If I hold it up closer to the camera, it's a very fine stitched detail. Can you see that? Aren't they cool? To add some interest to our projects, which is really awesome. And this little one here, this is actually a label die for cutting out these small little sentiments. Now remember, on the case here, they're a little bit smaller than in the actual... Um, Let's have a look. Here they are here. They're still quite small. If I show you, let's see, I've got a bit of cardstock here. They're still quite small. Um, and sometimes when you're trying to cut out a small sentiment like that, like it can be really tricky to, um, you know, cut that well on your trimmer or to, st to stamp on a really narrow piece if you've already cut it. So having this narrow little die will be perfect. It'll be so much easier to get a nice straight um, border around that little sentiment. So I love that. So thank you so much um, to Stampin' Up! for um, that. That's really awesome. And um, yeah, it's really great that Amy has got a die set to coordinate with her um, stamp set because that doesn't always happen with um, Million Sales Achievers. So there we go. So we'll have, we might have a little play with that and see how that works in a moment. But we'll put it aside for the moment because I'll show you the rest of the suite first. Um, there is a, oh, a beautiful embossing folder. It's called the Distressed Tile 3D Embossing Folder. Um, let me just turn the page. Let's see, 42 to 44. If you've got your catalogs there... Um, with you if you're a demonstrator and you're watching pages 42 to 44 is this um, suite that's right in the center of the catalog actually and my center page has fallen out I need to stick that back in um, I don't know why that fell out but yeah it did <laughs> too much use already perhaps um, this is a beautiful beautiful embossing folder and um, it does have a distressed look to it as well so it's a 3D, so it's thicker than your standard. So let's have a look at that. It's gorgeous, absolutely stunning design. Very hard to see when you before you've embossed it, but I do have some cardstock here. We could I could whack that through the embossing machine and show you. I'll put this in here. Let me grab my embossing machine and we'll have a little play. Hang on one sec, let me grab it. Oops. Now we need the big machine for this one because it's a big, um, a big embossing folder. And it's a 3D embossing folder, so hang on a sec. Let's bring over my embossing trolley so I can dump stuff on it. <laughs> um, you can see on my washi tape here I've been using and reusing. We might get rid of some of that. That looks a little bit, whoops, a little bit messy there. That one can go. We'll just keep those three. All right. So, um, 3D embossing, we are just using the base plate. Uh, let me just line this back up again in here. I want to show you the beautiful detail on this. Now, I haven't played with any of these products yet. I did open them just to have a little looky, but I haven't played with any of them yet. So, this is the first time that I'm playing with them as well, with you. 
Um, now, when you put your embossing folders through your embossing machine, any embossing folder, make sure you put through the hinge first. So the part that closes, hinge first, so that you don't damage your um, embossing folder because they can crack if you don't put them through the correct way. So here we go. Plates off. And there we go. Oh, that's beautiful. Now it might be a little bit hard to see on camera because I it's quite dark in colour, but let me just show you something. If I take some white white ink with my door but now I don't know if this is dry because I know this one dries out a fair bit it's a bit dry actually I haven't um haven't had my white out for a little while but if I run my white ink over this now another thing you can do is you can run your ink pad across your um folder across the inside of your folder first and then run your cardstock through oh my ink pad is very dry hang on where's my refill i have it right here because i had it out for another project um this one does tend to dry out um quite quickly this white one for some reason that's a it's a pigment ink so it's a different type of ink and i'm not sure if that's the reason why um, could also be the temperature in my room here as well because my craft room, I keep it quite warm because I feel the cold and Amber feels the cold and Callie feels the cold and Callie lays, sleeps on the floor, on well, on a blanket, but on the floor, so she gets quite cold. So anyway, let's do that. And just grab a baby wipe out. Always keep my baby wipes handy or you can use a damp sponge if you don't like using baby wipes. I know some people don't like to use baby wipes. It's just for me it's just quicker and easier. I'm probably going to need to put more ink on that ink pad but for now let's just go with that. Let's see if I can get a bit more ink. Oh that's better. Oh, now I probably went a bit too heavy just there, but that's okay. It's distressed. Now you can see that beautiful pattern coming up from that embossing folder. Now, as I said at the beginning, um, we're not actually making any full projects today. We're just having a little project playground where we're just going to play with some of these new products as I show them to you so you can see how they work. Um, what they look like and then you can decide if they are ones that you would like to add to your collection. Sorry I'm doing this really fast I'm probably not really doing a great job of this but that's okay it's just really to show you. There we go so now you can start to see that beautiful design from that embossing folder. Now there's little blank bits here that you think oh that hasn't embossed properly but it actually has. It's a distressed embossing folder, so you're meant to have those distressed um, parts there, okay? So don't think that your embossing folder is defective. That's actually how it's supposed to look. So, yeah. Okay, so I'll keep that piece because I'll use that on another project. And, um, yeah, that'll be really great. But isn't that just gorgeous? Simply stunning. Now, if you do happen to ink up your embossing folders um, what you can do is you can run your let me just open it Whoop. you run your ink on your embossing folder first now depending on um, so I had my cardstock up that way yes so I run would run the ink on the inside of the front cover where the Stampin' Up logo is 
and then to clean that ink off you just run that then under the water under your, your tap I usually do it in the laundry and um, it just runs straight off I mean you can take a, a chucks cloth or something like that and wipe over it if you want to um, you can wipe over it with a baby wipe but I like to run it under water to get it nice and clean and then that gives you and the imprinted um, um, colored ink into your cardstock and it gives you a, a different effect to this to the daubering as well but it gives a really really great effect as well so yeah I'll have to re-ink this one um, afterwards so I will leave my refill out and I'll give my bone folder a little clean leave that out again in case I need it so there we go so that is our first little play put that over there okay so I'll pop that aside so that's the distressed tile 3d embossing folder it's part of the um, all about autumn suite okay all right and then we've got the beautiful designer series paper now this is stunning this is a 48 sheet pack six by six this isn't a full pack that I have here I've already pulled some out so this is just one sheet of each of the papers to show you. Now, this is a photographic type paper, but look how stunning, on one side that is, wait till you see the other side though. Look how stunning that scene is. Now these papers, some of these papers remind me of, um, so I have um, a certain meditation album that I listen to. So if I'm trying, if I'm having trouble sleeping at night or something's bothering me, I put this meditation music on it and there's a particular track on there that's called um, uh, A Walk in the Forest, I think it is. And it's like you envisage yourself walking through this forest and, and they talk you through it, you know, in this meditation thing. And it's um, it's like a guided meditation. Just gets your mind thinking and relaxing. Uh, get your mind thinking about, um, you know, what they're saying to you and imaging uh, imagining yourself walking through this beautiful forest blah 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 and then there's a beautiful stream anyway that's what this paper reminds me of <laughs> um and it, it is very relaxing yeah and, and does help me get off to sleep when i'm having trouble sleeping then there's some other imagery in here as well we've got some um antique looking books here in a in a library we've got some more beautiful trees these look like a liquid amber or a um a maple tree Beautiful old um, couch, leather couch. Some more beautiful leaves. These look like oak leaves. These are actually um, the same shape as these ones here. And oak leaves are actually in my meditation. So <laughs> then we've got some more antique books. And these ones actually remind me of... The library we had at home when I was growing up, my mum, well, not wasn't a full library, but we had bookshelves. And mum had all these old books on there. Mum and dad had all these old books on there, including an old encyclopedia collection, like Encyclopedia Britannica, and all these other old books. And that's what this reminds me of. So just so cool. Some pumpkins. They're really, really cute. You know how you see those baby photos with babies sitting on a pumpkin or in a pumpkin? It could be quite cute or any nature sort of scene. Got some beautiful corduroy there. An aerial view of a forest, which I love. And look at the beautiful colours in there. Isn't it just stunning? We've got some awesome timber. Can never have enough timber paper. So this one is going to be one of our favourites. And I'm sure we're going to get several packs of this just for that sheet. <laughs> There's another beautiful one that reminds me of my um, my relaxation meditation. A walk in the forest, walking through the forest along the path with the canopy of trees and the leaves falling down. Oh, just so relaxing, so beautiful. And then we've got um, what looks to me like a, a knitted blanket there. But wait till you see, if you think that side is beautiful, wait till you see the other side of the papers. So that was the photographic side. This side has got copper foiling through it. Absolutely stunning. So I'll go through these ones a little bit quicker. Beautiful um, distressed designs again. Look at that. 
that beautiful foil shining there. This one's more of like a tile, like a, um, a tile design. Really cool. This one is um, Moody Mauve. I love Moody Mauve, or as they say in America, Moody Mauve. Hey, Deborah, how are you? Um, yes, I am doing a paper share. Yes, I was just talking about that, actually. Um, let me grab it. Yep, I, I'm going to be putting up the advertisement for it this afternoon. There is a registration link for it in the comments here right now. But um, it will be in all of my links this afternoon as well when I pop the links up um, after the video. But yes, I definitely will be. And there'll be two paper shares, one, um, and you can choose either or, or you can get all of them. I'll be doing the standard designer series papers, and then there's a separate one for the, um, the specialty papers. But they're all on the same registration form. You can um, choose which one you would like, or you can get all of them. So yes, so that's definitely coming. Um, and um, the registration, I didn't actually mention the registration for that. The registration for that will close on the 4th of September. So there's a little bit of time for that. At the moment, I'm just taking um, the registration forms, not payment yet. It's just a little bit too soon to take the payments yet. Um, but once people register, I will then notify them when the payments are due. So yeah, thanks for asking. So um, there's another beautiful um, design on that one. This beautiful pretty peacock. I love pretty peacock, especially with the foiling. It's gorgeous. Another tile design there. Um, oh, Deborah has just asked, am I doing an embellishment share? Well, I don't have one planned as yet, but if it's something that um, people want, then I might consider doing one. So, yeah, so if I have, if, if anybody else is interested in an embellishment share, let me know um, because it is something that I can run as well if I have enough interest. So definitely let me know. And then we've got that beautiful um, leaf image. There's another one that is in the Moody Mo with a different design. This one here is, um, I think it's, copper copper clay and another pretty peacock one so the colors of the reverse side are sort of um the colors are duplicated so that's the word i was thinking of but the designs are different on the backs so uh, let me tell you the colors i didn't tell you the colors um cajun craze copper clay crushed curry early espresso moody mauve mossy meadow pretty pink that's oh, pretty pink pretty peacock <laughs> Sorry, pretty peacock, um, pumpkin pie, and very vanilla. So isn't that just stunning? And just goes that all just goes so beautifully with that stamp set and the embossing folder and the dies. It's all just so so scrummy and beautiful. All right, and I love that that packet is a little bit bigger that it made it really easy for me to get that paper back in. Now there is also some specialty paper in this suite. And this is also going to be in the, um, the specialty paper share. This is the oxidized copper 12 by 12 specialty designer series paper. And there's four sheets in this. They are single sided, but look at that. Now that looks like patina to me. Did you see, has anyone seen my faux patina technique that I did I've done it a couple of times. Um, the last one I did, I used the, um, uh, what's it called? The pearlescent, um, oh, the liquid pearl stuff. I can't think what it's called and I don't know where it is. It's not here on my desk, so I can't tell you what it's called. Um, enamel effects. Pearl, is it enamel effects? Yeah. Um, but yes, this is all done for you. You just die cut it and you're done. So I really want to use this with, this suite, but also too, it would go beautiful with the Earth and Elegance suite as well. So there's that one in the uh, the Pretty Peacock. And then we've got the Copper Clay as well, which is also very stunning. Look at that. So just beautiful. So, so pretty. So yes, so I can't wait to have a play with that. 
then we've got actually I might leave that there I know it's highly reflective but I want to show you the ribbon that coordinates and I haven't even taken the I haven't opened the packets yet so I'm going to open them with you right now so let's open this one first we've got the copper and natural ribbon combo so this is the natural This is a beautiful thing. Oh, wow, this is really, really soft. I didn't expect that to be that soft. I thought it would be really stiff, but it's really, this is how you can tell if a ribbon is soft or not, if it flops over your finger like that. If it sits out, then you know that it's stiff, but this is really, really soft. So that'll be beautiful underneath your sentiment labels. Um, you could do some, like, little flag tags um, I don't know how well it will tie it might be a bit thick for a bow but let's have a look let's have a look and see oh, I don't have enough of a tail hang on a sec let's tie the ribbon the right way Mandy <laughs> that would be helpful it might be a little bit big for a bow but it would be really nice as an accent oh you know what this would be gorgeous on gifts <gasps> Yes, this would be beautiful. Actually, it ties a really nice bow because it's so soft. That is beautiful. Um, Julie just asked, is that natural ribbon like similar? Is that natural ribbon like a similar ribbon we had? It's actually different to the one we had before. Um, I'm just going to see what we've got now because I think there's another different one currently. Let me grab one and we'll compare. So, no, this is the other one that we've got at the moment. This is the burlap, which this is from the annual catalogue, and it's part of the Real Red and Burlap Ribbon Combo Pack. So it's different to that, and it's different to the one we had previously, Julie. I know the one that you mean. Um, no, it's actually different. I think it's actually wider as well, but you can see it's, it's a different colour, and this one is actually thicker. If you see how that one sort of sits, if I hang that one over my finger, see how it sort of sits out? Like it's not as flexible as this one, whereas this one just sort of hung. It's really soft. Let's compare. Let's do the... Let me see the difference there. How that... I mean, this one's kinked on the end because it was bent out. But see how soft that is? Because it just sits, just flops down. It's like floppy ribbon. Pearlized enamel effects. That's the one, Roz. Thank you. Yeah, no, this is really lovely. And you can fray this one too. Look at that. I love a ribbon that frays beautifully because I love frayed edges on my ribbons. So that will make a really beautiful accent on your projects. That's gorgeous. <gasps> so excited. So excited by this week. I think so far this one is this one is my favorite sweet so far. Out of the catalog. I mean, I know this is the only one I've shown you, but um, I mean, you know, I've looked at all the other ones and I think this one is my favorite one so far. So yeah, so there you go. So that's one of the ribbons. Yeah, that'll be stunning on um, gifts as well. Okay, so there's that one. And then this one is a copper ribbon. So I'm interested to see what this one feels like. I think this one's going to feel like quite stiff. But let's see. I might get a surprise. This is the copper ribbon. Oh, actually, not so sit, not so stiff after all. It's quite soft. It's a lot softer than I thought. A little bit stiff, but quite a bit softer than I thought. Let's see how it ties. Oops. Okay, so it wants to sort of grip a little bit when it ties. But no, look, it's, you know what? That's going to hold the bow really nicely, actually. So get our loops, our loops um, nice there. Yeah, oh, that's pretty. That's gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful with the um, the paper? That'll be gorgeous with the with all the natural tones in these papers. Look at that. Stunning. Look at that. 
that's going to be gorgeous so there you go yeah that'll be really beautiful uh, oh good question amber is the copper ribbon only shiny on one side no it's the same on both sides actually look at that so you don't have to worry too much when you're tying your bow because you know sometimes you get those ribbons that are only um, colored on one side and you've got to twist your your loops as you're tying them this is the same on both sides so that's cool yeah good questions great questions coming through today thanks everyone So there we go. Yeah, I love that. Oh, I can't wait to use this one. That's going to be beautiful. All right, and then we have some embellishments that coordinate. Um, now, let's see. Did I Let me just scroll back up. Did I miss any comments? Oh, I did. Um, buh, 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 buh. Um, oh, Julie said she has this one on her list. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Hey, Athena. I missed you jumping on. Great to see you. I'm great today. Thank you. Yes, had a great weekend. Lots of fun things and um, exciting week coming up. So, yeah. Oh, your center page fell out also, Brenton. Oh, my goodness. What is going on? <gasps> crazy, crazy. Ah, oh, I think we need to let Stampin' Up! know that our center pages are falling out of our catalogs because that's no good. They'll want to fix that. Um, yeah. All right, so these are, where did I just put the packet? Oh, it's written on the back of this one. Adhesive-backed speckled dots. So these ones have sort of got like a glitter through them. You can't see it as much in this colored one. Now this color is, let me tell you. Doo -doo 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 -doo. We've got Mossy Meadow, Moody Mauve, Crumb Cake, and Copper. You can't see the speckled speckles the, the glitter as much in the copper in the copper clay but you can see it in the others or it could just be my lighting too but yes they've got like little speckles of um glitter through them really pretty but they will go beautifully with that designer series paper as well yeah really nice very nice okay All right, so we're going to just very quickly now put, put all that back together because we want to move on to the next suite. But I wanted to show you what these look like um, stamped. So I have some cardstock already cut. Oh my goodness, where did my white cardstock go? Hang on a sec. I had a big stack of white cardstock aha uh -huh. it's under my dies here we go I thought that couldn't have all just disappeared I cut all of that just before we went live so that I would have it ready to show you um okay so let's take let's take the large one let's do the large one now first time I'm opening my stamps the first time you open them they are quite stuck to the um the backing sheet so just be careful when you remove them because you don't want to accidentally tear your your stamps that would be very sad um, because this one is a solid shape so this one doesn't matter so much but some of the others that are a little bit more pliable the best thing to do with your photopolymer stamps is put them down onto some paper or some cardstock um, face down as if you were stamping them okay let them relax into the natural shape and then pick the stamp up with the block. Now let's see, is this gonna fit on a D block? Ooh, these are big. These are bigger than I thought. They might just fit at an angle. Let's see, have I got that right on? Oh, it's off the beveled edge a little bit there. Oh, we might need a slightly bigger. Let's see, does it tell us on here still? It used to say on the stamp sets what size block you would need. Doesn't look like that information's on here now. Doesn't look like they add that anymore. Oh, does it say in the... No, I might get a bigger block because I think that one's going to be a little bit too small. Let me get the bigger one. I'll get this one. Then I won't have to worry. There we go. And then we pick up the stamp that way. Um, I'll grab the other one as well because... Actually, we're going to get the... Um, 
also the veiny part of the leaf that coordinates this one here. We'll take that off as well. Now this one is more pliable because it's got extra detail. So just be very careful. Probably should do it on a flat surface, Mandy. Just be very careful removing that off your backing sheets. Just do it little bit by little bit, working it off. There we go. All right, and I'm going to put that one down onto... Now, see how that's wibbly-wobbly? So it's stretchy, so it can change shape. Now, we want that to line up with the stamp. So the best thing to do is to pop it down onto your paper, let it relax into its natural shape, and then pick it up with your block. Ooh, will that fit on that one? No, it's too narrow. All right, grab grab my other big block so this block I'm using is e-block e-block but if you had a Stamparatus not that Stampin' Up sells them anymore but if you had one in your stash um, and you didn't have these big blocks you could certainly use your Stamparatus as well okay now with photopolymer stamps when you first get them you must clean them before you stamp with them because they come with some um, Oh, thank you. In the catalogue, it says D, E, and G. Oh, does it? I missed that. Thanks, Deborah. Um, let's see. Oh, is that in the back? Which page was that on, Deborah? Was that in the back where it lists the... Uh... I'm trying to see where that information is so I can tell people where it is. Was that in the back, but Deborah, where you saw what size block, or is it in on the sweet page? Just trying to see where that is. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Hmm. Hmm. Page forty-four. Oh, over the page where it shows the actual stamp set. Ah, thank you. There it is. Yes, block D, E, and G. And which one did I say I had? E. Oh, there you go. So, oh, thank you so much for that. Yeah, because I was looking on the um, the actual sweet page, not over the page where the stamp set was. So, thank you. Thought I was going crazy then, thinking, where, what am I missing? <laughs> um, so, yeah, always clean your photopolymer stamps before you use them when you get them because they come with a little bit of manufacturing oil on them and sometimes the ink doesn't like to stick to them when you first get them. So, it's always a good idea to give them... A good clean first so you can use your chamois you can use your stamp and mist with your stamp and scrub squeaky squeaky I know some people don't like that noise but it's necessary to clean them and then dry them as well so dry them just by stamping them onto some scrap paper there we go all right now I didn't get any colors out actually what colors are in this suite let's have a look um, we've got copper clay, mossy meadow, pretty peacock, moody mo, very vanilla, copper, f and copper foil. Um, we might grab out copper clay. I mean, you can, they're autumn leaves. You can color them, you can stamp them in whatever color you like, really. But, um, I just thought I would grab what is from the, uh, the suite. So let's ink that up. Oh, that's going to be very dark. So we might do two. Let's do two. Actually, you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to put my stamp and pierce mat underneath because we're using photopolymer stamps and it just gives you that little bit of cushioning, which will give you a much nicer stamped image. And let's go two generations. So we'll do first generation, which is going to be very dark, very, very dark. And then we'll do second generation, which is much lighter. Look at the difference in the color. Isn't that amazing? Stunning. All right. And then with the veins, we'll do first generation on this one here. And let's see if I can line this up. How do I line this up now? Let's see. Uh, I think it'll be fairly, fairly forgiving, actually, because of the design of it. Oh my goodness, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. 
I don't know how we'll go stamping the veins on this one. I maybe maybe do early espresso. I might grab early espresso because I don't think it's going to show up. I don't think the copper clay on copper clay directly will show up. So hang on, let's clean this off and I'll get some um, early espresso. Oh, these are beautiful. Turn my chamois over to the dirty side now because I'm going to make it more dirty. <laughs> Let's give that a little clean. Now, this copper clay is a deeply pigmented ink, um, so it is going to stain the stamps a little bit, but don't panic. It doesn't damage your stamp so long as you clean that surface ink off. Um, but now you'll see that my stamp is no longer clear. It's You can see the detail on it. It's a little bit pinky. That's kind of what happens with the photopolymer stamps. Um, but they still work perfectly well. So long as you clean that surface ink off them, then they are good to go. All right, so I'm using a little bit of early espresso. So we'll see what the early espresso looks like. And as I said, this is my first time. So we are playing and exploring together and experimenting. So let's just see. Oh, yes. Look at that. Ah, so pretty. Wow. All right. I'll give both of those a bit of a ink off on the paper and then we'll give them a clean. Good idea to clean them as soon as you can um, just to eliminate too much excess staining. You will get a little bit, but if we can eliminate as much as possible, then that's good. Stamp that off onto the dry piece. Let's do the same with the veins. Um, Amy Coenders, she's actually been making some really beautiful projects with this um, suite. If you haven't yet seen her um, project, Stamping with Amy K, be sure to go and check those out because they are stunning. The other thing I wanted to test was these little tiny sentiments. Um, I'm going to pick out one of these to match with this little tiny die. I want to see how they look. Does this one fit in there? Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. So these little tiny sentiments, if you're going to use the die, hang on, I'll show you. If you're going to use the little die to die cut these little sentiments, you're going to need to make sure that your sentiment label is really, really straight. Okay, so you can do one of two things. Lay it down on your paper like I showed you. I'll just grab my little block. I've got my little um, G block. Lay it down on your paper or your, your scrap paper. Let it relax into its natural form. Make sure that it's sort of straight. I like to give it a little, you know, push around a little bit to make sure it's not sticking to the paper. And then this one's, there we go. And then pick it up with your block. Now, if you want to be added, addedly sure or extra sure, take your die out, lay your um, stamp down in your die, or you can do it this way, lay your die in your stamp and just make sure, whoops, it's sticking a little bit. Just make sure that it's going to line up. Oh, look, that lines up just perfect. And if it doesn't, then you can wiggle your stamp around to fit inside your die. Okay, or you can do it the other way around. You can do it like this. Put your die with the cutting edge face up. Take your stamp. Lay your stamp down into your die. Make sure that it's fitting in your die nicely. Are you in there? And then you can take your block to your stamp okay and then you can double check and this one's a little bit more fiddly because it's so tiny and narrow yeah so we'll do one of these as well just to see what that's going to look like let's do that in early espresso oh I didn't clean this one though just give this one a little gentle clean because I've got it on the block so I don't want it to move on that block dry it off Oops, oh, I'm not on there. <laughs> Test it. Oh, that's such a nice font. I really love that. There we go. Let's stamp another one. Oh, 
there we go third time lucky these ones these ones were fine but i just was a bit heavier on one end so i just want to make sure that i was stamping it was it was the stamper not the stamp <laughs> All right, so let's die cut these and see what these look like when they're die cut. Make sure that I put that back on there. So um, we're going to take, oh, now interestingly. All right, so that is with them stamped. But then if I die cut, it's going to die cut off the leaf. I mean the, the stem. So, which I just noticed. So that's good to know. All right, so if I now die cut this, see how that die is going to cut off that stem there. So then if we wanted the stem or the, the um, is it the stem? What do you call it? The stem of the leaf? I think that's what you call it. Um, we could actually die cut these ones to overlay on the inside instead of the stamped. Yes. So we could do, yeah, we could do that one as a separate piece. All right, so let's do that and see what that looks like. What I'm going to do first, though, is I'm just going to cut around this because I don't want to um, accidentally cut those extra sentiments or the extra leaf. There we go. We'll put those ones to the side. Oh, I was going to do one of those sentiments, wasn't I? Um go across here put that extra leaf aside and I'm going to take this sentiment here the middle one so I thought that one looked the best there we go all right so let's have a little looky of this one and this one and see All right, so we're not going to be playing with all of the products today, just a few of them, because otherwise we'll be here all day. <laughs> We've got, and I'm sure that you all have other things you need to do in your day as well, rather than sit here and watch me play all day. But it is good to, um, to see how these products work so that you can then decide if that's something that you might like as well. All right, so I'm going to use my washi tape just to hold this die in place. If I've got that lined up, hopefully I have. There we go. Okay, so we'll do that one. And where'd my little one go now? Did I put this on top of it? No. Okay. Um, where did it go? Now I've lost it. Oh no, there it is. There it is, there it is. Okay. So we want to make sure that we have our um, label just really snug around that sentiment. And then we are definitely going to need to washi tape this one because we do not want that to move because there's no room, not a lot of room for error on this one. There we go. Okay. I might just put those two through first and then we'll come back and do that other, the veiny one. There we go. I might have to make up a card with these pieces and um, post that on my page as well to show you later. <gasps> Gorgeous. Look at that. I didn't have it quite lined up properly, but that was my mistake. Beautiful. That looks awesome. So you don't necessarily need the stem of the of the um, leaf if you don't want it because you might want to um, have like a, a cluster of flower uh, leaves or they might be, you know, falling leaves, falling down from somewhere or, you know, I don't know, leaves on the ground or something. So you might have a whole heap of different colored ones all sort of clustered. Oh, look at that. Look at that, teeny tiny, 
teeny tiny look at that how cute is that you could even if you wanted to you could even just use the word friend but the other sentiments do sort of coordinate with that how gorgeous is that oh i love that beautiful 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 all right and then i'll just show you how to do the other what the other piece looks like not how to do the other piece i'm sure that a lot of you know how to how to do die cutting but we'll just have a look and see what it looks like when it's die cut and i'll get the um i'll get the early espresso i am sure to have some scrap here somewhere let's see does that fit whoops does that fit on there oh almost but not quite can i make it fit let's see can i make it can i make it ah it's just a little bit too narrow okay that's all right um what else have i got in in my scraps here we go here's one this one will be better yes all right let's die cut that one through and see what that looks like if we overlay that on the leaf the stamped leaf so you can also die cut the outline of the leaf in um, cardstock as well in fact we might try that too just to see the difference we can compare the pair all right so just very gently remove this from my mat my very cut up clear plate i should say there we go all righty and we'll do let's grab a piece of um the copper clay And we'll just do the leaf outline in copper clay so that we can compare what it looks like with the stamped image and the um, the just the die cut leaf. Probably should have die cut those both at the same time, but it was a bit of an afterthought, so it's okay. All good, all good. Alrighty, through we go. So there's the leaf outline. So we can have a look and see both ways. So of course there's many other dies in this set too that you can use. Um, just wanted to show you the biggest, the biggest leaf. So we need to put that back on here somehow. These ones are going to definitely need to go on my magnet sheets because otherwise I'm going to lose them i have no idea how this was even on there i didn't even take close pay close attention that'll do for now <laughs> just as long as i don't lose them all right okay so and that's the stamp that goes with that set all right so let's have a look so we could have the leaf just like that without the stem okay so we've got our our little sentiment on there and we might have stamped um i'm thankful I'm thankful um, to have you as a friend. That would be really lovely. And we could also add this. So instead of doing the stamping, because I don't know if this lines up exactly with the stamping. No, it doesn't. It's a little bit different. But you could have that over the top of the stamping. But I probably wouldn't stamp the, um, I wouldn't stamp the veins. I just stamp the leaf and then put that over the top so that would look really nice that would look beautiful and then you can have your little sentiment over the top or you can have your sentiment anywhere else on the card or 
this is the same color so this is the um the oh wait did i pull out copper clay wonder if I pulled out the wrong colour. Hang on a sec. Oh, I did. Anyway, this one's pecan pine, not copper clay. I pulled out the wrong colour. But anyway, let's have a look at what that would look like on there. Beautiful. So then you could adhere that. You could adhere the, adhere the veins to, to there. That would be beautiful too. So there you go. So there's different ways you can use um, this set. You can do two-step stamping or you can just have the, the leaf outline without the veins. You could add that to there. You can add that, that to there. So lots of different things you can do. Isn't that beautiful? So there you go. So that is a bit of a looky at the, um, the All About Autumn Suite. Now, is that going to fit back in there with that die hanging out the end? No, it's not. All right, you're just going to have to tuck in there. I'll have to fix you later. I just want to make sure that I put everything back together so that I don't lose anything. <laughs> so there you go. So what do you think? Is that a set that you might like? Do you think? Is that kind of down your alley? All right. I'll pop those away. Actually, I might put those in the uh, stamp case. So that I have them for a future project. And in fact, you know what? I'm going to put those stamps back in the stamp case now because I did clean them and they should be dry. Always make sure that you your stamps are dry before you put them back away because otherwise um, you don't want them, you know, going moldy or something gross. Just pop these ones back in there for now. Oh, I'm getting hot now. This one, yeah, just be quite careful with this one. It's a little bit more delicate with the um, all those little fine pieces on it. And a sentiment, pop that away as well. There we go. Now we've got everything back where it belongs, so we won't lose anything. And I'll keep that extra one too, because I might use that for something. Good. All right, sleeves up. <laughs> she's working hard now all right the next suite I'm going to show you um which we won't we won't probably play oh, they, I just want to show you the um I do want to show you the embossing folders though now I am missing I think a whole heap of comments here hey Vicky how are you going great to have you with us um oh no that was the only one that I missed actually it was just um Vicky saying hello hi Vicky all right the next one we're going to look at is the old ho Oh, Holy Night Suite. If you've got your catalogue, it's on pages 14 to 17. And this is a big bumper suite. So this has got lots of products in this suite. We have two stamp and die bundles in this suite. Hang on a sec. I need to have a drink of water. Okay, so this one, so this one has um, two beautiful stamp and die sets. This stamp set is um, sentiment focused, and um, so you've got joy and peace, the Lord is my shepherd, glory to God in the highest, O holy night, he shall be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. And the stars are brightly shining. So this one is a red rubber. The images are shown at 95%. So it's a red rubber stamp. You've got the stickers there. You can attach to your stamps as well. So you can, um, you know, line those up. I always like to add my stickers. Some people don't, but I do. I like to add my stickers. And then we've got the beautiful nativity scene, which comes with the dies. So this is the Night Divine dies. The other bundle in this set is quite different. Um, it's based on the stars in the sky, um, but this one is based on the nativity. So you've got the, the stable, you've got some clouds, you've got a little sheep up here, a donkey. Then we've got the nativity here 
and then we've got a camel another standing up sheep and another different cloud there as well so really really beautiful um yeah they will make some beautiful nativity scenes you could even use the little you could use the the um the barn oh sorry the stable i said i think i said barn the stable you could use it as a barn with animals um, it would coordinate with some of our other stamp sets as well, with some of our other animal stamp sets. I reckon um, could even maybe turn it into some sort of little um, gazebo or alfresco or something like that. I think I can see lots of different uses for this one. The clouds, of course, you can use that on lots of different um, projects and the animals as well. You can. So it's really the nativity that is quite um, focused on um the the nativity of christmas or the the uh, meaning of christmas so but the other pieces you can use in other projects as well even the camels like the camels would be awesome um wait till you see the designer series paper the camels themselves would be awesome in the desert in the designer series paper so you can use them all together or you can use them separately so there you go you've even got a shepherd and the shepherd you could even if you wanted the shepherd in the um the desert with the sheep you could actually even um trim him off the dies if you just wanted just the shepherd so yeah i think this is really cleverly designed so this suite um oh, i'll show you the other the other stamp and die bundle first so i love this one this is the first one that jumped out at me in um in the the christmas themed um, products and then the other bundle in this suite is the stars at night i'll put that one to the side so it's not reflecting too much stars at night this one is beautiful look at all these dies and there's an embossing folder which is a hybrid embossing folder which coordinates with these so i'm going to show you um, how to use that so this one, um, beautiful stars on here. These are only shown at 85%, so they're quite a lot bigger. Um, more generic sort of um, sentiments here, whereas the other ones are more sort of Christian focused. These ones are more sort of generic. So we've got celebrating the magic of the season, Merry Christmas, wishing you um, the, sorry, wishing you the best and brightest holiday season. We've got some mistletoe, some starbursts. These starbursts, these could even be used for other um, events as well, not necessarily Christmas. You could use them as fireworks or um, um, I reckon even this one could be used as like sun rays. Uh, yeah, so I think, and the stars, you can use them for lots of different, lots and lots of different um, occasions. So there you go. So you can see the difference in the size from the front to the inside. They're quite quite a bit um, bigger and lots of beautiful detail. So there we go. And then the dies, I'll take them out of the packet. So there's all the dies. So we've got the dies that quite cut out um, this stamp here. Sorry, it's reflecting. Um, this stamp here, um, these ones here, they have um, a die and this one, this one will be interesting to try. I haven't tried, haven't tried any of these yet actually. Um, this one, I love the detail in this one. It's got embossed detail in there as well. But this big one here, it coordinates with the embossing folder, but then also too, if you just want to... Um, die cut it on its own you've got these details here as well that coordinate with that big star and then you've got these little um, details here as well that coordinate with these stars so yeah so many different pieces to piece together or use on their own this beautiful frame here coordinates with this sentiment here or you could use it um, in other ways for other projects yeah, really, really lovely. You could use it for a straight sentiment and then put some um, rhinestones or some embellishments around the top there to just give a little bit of extra pizzazz to your sentiment label, all different sorts of things. So anyway, so they're the two bundles. Let me show you the other products. Um, I'll come back to the embossing folder because I want to show you how to use that with these dies.
Makes me want to um, makes me want to start singing Oh Holy Night, but I won't. <laughs> these are the beautiful, beautiful papers. Now these are simply stunning. Look at these. So in this paper, we have basic black, boho blue, copper clay, crumb cake, misty moonlight, night of navy, pebbled path, and very vanilla. Now we've got two paper packs in this suite. This is the standard designer series paper. And then we've got some specialty paper as well, which is equally, if not more stunning than this. So um, you get, I don't think, have I got the whole pack in here? I'm not sure. No, I don't think I have the whole pack in here. I think this is half a pack that I have out here. But see, look at this beautiful paper. Now, this would make an awesome scene um, in a scrapbooking layout, or you can cut it up for your cards. So see what I mean by the desert? How cool would that look with the camels, you know, walking through the desert? So cool. Or you could do the whole nativity there. You've got the starry sky. That would be awesome for the nativity. Um, these are sort of like um, painted, painted scenes. Like this one sort of looks almost like water, water painted in the background. How cool is that with all those stars? I can see um, lots of little, if you put um, Wink of Stella or some basic rhinestones in the middle of these stars to make them, you know, shimmery, they would be beautiful. This one is just a painted scene. You've got a little bit of... Um, sand dunes down here or sand hills down here really really beautiful we've got some we have got some water effect here on this paper it looks almost like coffee staining doesn't it this one here is just um, painted in the different blues this one here you've got um, an ancient little village or, or a um a middle eastern village or um perhaps i don't know a village somewhere um, and then you've got some um, stars in the sky there. There's some more village there in the background. So that would be really beautiful. Um, some animals in the foreground or um, you can even have the nativity in the foreground. Like all different sorts of things. I'm sure, I'm sure that all of you clever people can think of other products that we have in our product line as well, in the Stampin' Up! product line that could coordinate with these as well and use them in totally different ways that we haven't even thought of yet. Look at this beautiful one, that beautiful um, water splash on there and the stars, just I oh, love it. All right, and let's have a look at the reverse sides of this paper. We've got some gorgeous patterns here. There's some more stars. More stars in the copper clay. Really love that. That looks beautiful. Um, this one has got some very deep blues and there is a sort of like a um, tile mosaic pattern in the background. Might be a little bit hard to see. Oh no, I think you can see it there on camera. This one's really lovely. It can be used as um, lace or as, um, what did Amber say it looked like? Um... Oh, I can't remember. Um, art Deco, sort of like an Art Deco look. Yeah, really beautiful. Got some more patterns here. And then this one, I really love this vanilla one. This, this would be gorgeous for a vintage card. This would make really beautiful. Actually, this one too, these two together would be stunning for a vintage card. Yeah, so there you go. So they have other uses as well. So if with, with all of the designer series paper that Stampin' Up! has, if you don't like one side of the paper, there's always another pattern on the other side. So if you don't find a use, for instance, for this one, then on the other side, you've got that beautiful pattern. This would make beautiful masculine cards too. I love the rich colours in this one. Would go great with those um, autumn leaves as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, so there you go. So that's the uh, the Oh Holy Night designer series paper. Now I'll show you the other paper pack in, oh, sorry, yeah, the other paper pack in the suite. It is this stunning one. This is called the Shining Brightly 12 by 12 specialty paper. Now this one has six sheets in it and this one has the beautiful gold foiling on it 
and these are single sided because they have the, the gold foiling. So we've got the leaves, we've got like a um, tile mosaic kind of design there, some stars, there's the tile mosaic again in the vanilla, isn't that beautiful, so pretty, the stars again, and then the leafy pattern again. So you've got the... Um, the same designs, but you've got it in the Night of Navy and in the vanilla, the very vanilla. Aren't they just so beautiful? They will make gorgeous, gorgeous Christmas cards. And in fact, I think um, some of these ones in particular wouldn't necessarily need to be Christmas. Well, probably even this. You could probably use this as background paper for um, other things other than Christmas. I don't think they necessarily need to be used for Christmas, but they are just beautiful. And then I'll uh, pop, pop this back in the packet, protect it. So we've got beautiful ribbon and bling, of course. So this ribbon is the Knight of Navy and Gold Glittered Ribbon. Knight of Navy and Gold Glittered Ribbon. But I know for a fact that I, this has glit, uh, gold and copper glitter in the ribbon. Now, it looks quite deep when it's on the roll like that, but you'll see when I find the end of it. Where's the end? There it is. It's actually quite a sheer ribbon. See how sheer that is? It's beautiful. Yeah, and it actually looks like it's got gold and copper sequins on it. It's only sequined on one side, so when you're tying a bow, you'll have to um, twist your, your bow as you go to tie it. Um, with the glitter, it's probably going to be a little bit grippy as you tie it as well, but it will tie. Some of the glitter might come off if you're tying bows or we're working with it, so just be careful. We have to be especially careful with glittery things because of our little doggy with her eyes and she picks things up off the floor and all sorts of things. So, yeah, so it does want to grip a little bit with that, um, with that glitter as you're tying your bow. So I'm not sure how small a bow you'll be able to get. But if you work it, I'm sure that you'll be able to, um, yeah, I won't, I won't fuss too much with it right now. But yeah, if you work it, you'll be able to, to get a nice bow. And depending on how you tie your bows too, like some people do the, the double bunny ears and tie them. I can't tie bows that way. I have to do it like the tra traditional way, the traditional way. Um, but yeah, really, really pretty ribbon. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Very pretty. And in fact, I didn't twist that one. So that side is up, actually upside down. So I should have twisted that when I was tying the ribbon. But you kind of get the idea anyway. Do get a little bit of glitter coming off this one. So just be aware of that when you're using it. And to coordinate with that, I'm just going to actually pick those bits up now and put them in the bin so they don't end up on my floor. Don't want the puppy. Don't want the puppy getting those in her eye. That would cause all sorts of problems. We've got enough problems <laughs> with the puppy. Um, these are stunning. The adhesive-backed star trinkets. When I first saw these, when these, when I opened up my box, I'm like, oh my goodness, they are gorgeous, and they're so much finer and more delicate than I imagined. I thought that they were going to be big and chunky and bulky. But they're not. Like, look at next next to my nail. Let's put my little pinky nail under there. Look how delicate they are. Can you see that? They're just really, really delicate. Actually, if I put a little bit of, I've got a bit of cardstock here. I'll slip a bit of cardstock under there. This is the Starry Sky cardstock. Can you see those there? They're really lovely. So they're in two sizes. We've got the large and the small, but they're really pretty. So they will go so beautiful with um, those stamps, with those star stamps and with the designer series paper with all those beautiful stars on them as well. Yeah, they're just gorgeous. So adhesive backed star trinkets. I'm glad these, one came, these ones came with adhesive backs actually because they would have been um, fiddly to adhere if they didn't have the... Um, the adhesive on the back. All right, 
and lastly in the suite is the embossing folder so this is the stars at night hybrid embossing folder now i've seen some demonstrations of this but i haven't used it myself yet and this is my very first hybrid embossing folder i've always wanted to try one of the hybrids and I don't, I think this is my first one. Now that I say that, I'm just thinking again. I think this is my first one. I don't normally buy the hybrid ones because I feel a little bit unsure about using them, <laughs> a little bit nervous about using them, but I really have wanted to try one. And so this is the one. Now, this large die here, I'll take this off carefully. Let's do that on a flat surface carefully so that we don't bend our dies. Definitely this one needs to go on magnetic sheets as well. Ping, ping, ping. There we go. Got it. Okay. Am I going to get it back on the sheet is the question. <laughs> so each one of these stars does actually die cut separately, but to make it easier, the dies are attached. Okay. But you will get three individual um, stars there. All right. So this one interlocks with this, the, um, the dies, sorry, the designs in the embossing folder. Now, if you sit it on, I've got it on the one, the side that has the Stampin' Up on it, the Stampin' Up logo, and I've got it facing up with the um, cutting side up, okay? So if you put it there like that, now let, I think this is right. Then if you put the cardstock over the top, now let me see, I might not have cut a big enough piece in that. So I did have a bigger piece in this one here. In fact, what is the size of this? Is it six by six? Let's see, no, it's a bit bigger than six by six, isn't it? About six by six would fit. I'm gonna cut a piece of six by six um, paper. So I can fit it inside the folder. All right. I think this is right. So, so I've got the cutting side up. It's locked in on the design on the um, embossing folder. Cardstock over the top. Embossing folder closed. And then we're going to run that through the machine. Okay, so it's going to look like that. Now, embossing machine over, hinged side through the machine first, okay, because that's the, um, that's the safest way so you don't damage your machine. Now I'm not sure if, the, if it matters if you have the dies on the top side or the bottom side, I would probably have them on the top side. That's the side where the Stampin' Up! logo is anyway. So to me, that's the way that it's meant to go up the right way, I think. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, if you have um, discovered a different way. But I think that makes more sense. And then it's a 3D embossing folder with the dies in it. So it's going to be tight. And we're going to roll that through. Now I'm not forcing it, but it is like it is going through on its own. It's just a little bit harder to crank the handle. And because I'm doing it sideways too, I'm not putting all of my um, my muscle into it sideways. Normally when I'm die cutting, I'm die cutting this way. But to do it on camera, I have to die cut it this way. So it's kind of a different, yeah, using different muscles. <laughs> all right. So, oh, hold your breath, everybody. Let's see. Let's see, let's see how that turned out. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, so it cut out the stars. Oh, look at all that detail. All right, I'll hold this up for you. So then we can just lift this out. And the stars fall out of the sky. And we've got, so we've got all that background there and I'll show you what that will look like if the stars weren't die cut but now you've got these stars with all of this beautiful beautiful detail 
can you see all of that embossed detail it's very deep like it's very very embossed like it's like a couple of layers of embossing almost on these stars they're just gorgeous so stunning with all of that on there um, if you whacked a bit of Wink of Stella, we might even do that. Um, if this wasn't die cut, if we didn't use the dies but we just embossed, you'd get this gorgeous embossed design. A little bit hard to tell because I've die cut them out. But you'd have that beautiful embossed design with all of that detail. Okay, so that's how you can use them together. Now, you can use the dies just on their own. You can use the embossing folder on its own. Um, yeah, just however you want to do it. You can also um, die cut, I believe, you can die cut the stars first. So you don't need to put the waste, you know, you don't, if you, you might think, oh gosh, that's a lot of waste. Um, you can just die cut the flower, the, sorry, the stars first and then lay them over the um actually would you lay them over or would you lay them in maybe you'd lay them in this way you can lay them over the embossed section and then close that very carefully making sure that you line them up let's go this way oh. so you die cut your star and then lay it over the embossed detail just make sure you've got it lined up and then run it through you can do it that way so lots of different lots of different ways that you can um, use that but that's really I'm really excited about that that's going to be fun to play with awesome 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 and the detail just the gorgeous detail in that let's have a look again with the uh, the white oh hey Megan um, oh, Amber said she thought that um, you embossed, then ran it through separately to die cut. No, you can do it both together. Well, you could. There's lots of different ways you can do it. You probably could do it that way, um, but you can. Yeah, you you can do it that way as well. But then, if you were to do that, um, if you were to emboss it first and then run it through, um, if you wanted any of that other detail at the back it would flatten it if you ran it back through again through the um, embossing machine so if you do it that's what's good about the hybrid embossing folders it does everything all at once how are you going Megan does the star on the bottom right corner in the pack cut the star and emboss the little stars oh good question all right let's have a look at that before I ink anything does the star the little star okay which one uh, does the star on the bottom right corner in the pack cut the star and emboss the little stars? Um, which one? The bottom corner. This one? No. In the bottom right hand corner. This one? How is Callie? Oh, Callie's doing really well, thank you. She's feeling much better now after her vet visit. Um, yeah, she's feeling a lot better. This one? Maybe this one. Do you mean this one? I'm not sure which one you mean, Megan. Um, this one, I maybe die cut some of those other ones. This one. Does seem to fit on there. I don't know if you would put that through at the same time, though. I don't know if that would... Because I don't think that's part of the hybrid... Usually with the hybrid, I think you have the open dies. So you'd probably have to do it separately because it's a, a closed die. But it might. The first one I pointed to, this one. This one? Um, this one. Okay, what was your question again? Let me just, <laughs> let me go back up to the question. Um, does the star on the bottom right hand corner in the pack cut the star and emboss the little stars oh yes if you do it on its own I think so yes we'll have a play with that one as well I was just wanting to see if this one cut out these little stars I think it does it fits so I think it would I think it would die cut out those little ones too only that might be around the wrong way 
It's the same star though. Anyway, that will be interesting to play with. Um, but yes, let's play with this one too. What I was just going to do is ink up some of the stars on here so you could see some of this detail in the background a little bit better. You see those beautiful stars and the um, the detail on them, the embossed detail on them. And it's, I actually haven't seen a, a um, embossing folded die cut a uh, detail bleh, emboss. <laughs> That's the word emboss. So much detail. Can you see that? Look at that. It's so amazing how much detail there is in those die in that embossing. I keep on saying dies in the embossing. Yeah. So really, really excited about that. All right, we'll have a go with this other one and see what that looks like. I have a feeling that, yeah, that's going to do the surround. Um, what I was going to do too is grab my Wink of Stella, if I can. Here we go. Let's Wink of Stella, this big one, and then we'll set it aside and we'll come back to it. Oh, that end. That end... Get my Wink of Stella. This is my older one, so it's running out a little bit. can do the whole star. Let's glitter up the whole star. I just need to give this a bit more of a squeeze. This one's nearly empty. I need to get my other one out. Who else loves their Wink of Stella? It's great for adding that glitter and glitz to your project. And um, I always have a couple in my stash because usually I am, I usually have a spare one in the cupboard because I never know when it's going to run out and when I'm going to need to um, replace it. But I often have two on the go at one time. Don't ask me why. <laughs> But I do. So there we go. So we'll set that aside and let that dry. As I said, that one's a bit, that one is a bit um, empty. But I think we got a little bit of, we got a bit of glitter on there anyway. Yeah, definitely need to replace this one. I think I've got another one there somewhere. I'll have to find it. All right, we'll set that one aside to dry and we'll have a look at this other one. So there we go. I'll keep these for another project. These big ones can go back on my die sheet oh, I'm not going to get them back on in the right way now again magnet sheets they're a lifesaver really there we go okay well time saver okay so let's do this one um, do, 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 do. we have oh you know what I wanted to do you know what I wanted to do. I have got some silver foil here. And I thought, how amazing will these stars look in silver foil? So how about we do that first? And then we'll do the um, this one. Yes, I wanted to see what these look like. All right. Rather than lift the die cutting machine back over, I'm just going to die cut it where it is. Hang on a sec. Okay, with that folder, it's much easier standing up and die cutting. How's this going to look? Did I do it the right way? I did. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is stunning. Look at that on the silver foil. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Oh, this is going to be a favorite, I think, for the Christmas cards this year. <laughs> That's gorgeous. Love that. Look at all that detail so amazing wow well there you go all right let's have a little go with this one and uh, see how this one die cuts all 
I'm going to bring in my mini because it's easier. It's <laughs> lighter and easier for me to lift. Alrighty. And this is only a little die, so we can we can do it on the mini. All right. I will use... I'm using a little bit of Starry Sky because we are cutting stars. So I thought I'd pull out a little bit of Starry Sky. So let's see how this one cuts. So this one, oh, this one's going to be a little bit different. Look, it's, it cut out the star in the middle, which could be used also as a starburst or a sunburst, couldn't it? Could be used as a sunburst. Oh, wow, look at that. Now I might need to get my dye brush. Get my dye brush out and, whoops. Give that a little roll to get all those little extra bits out. Have you all seen the die brush? It just attaches onto the end. I didn't realize I didn't have it screwed in properly. It attaches onto the end of your take your pick tool. You just unscrew the putty end and it just screws in to there in replace of that. And it comes with two of the foam mats and I just put mine in an old Tupperware container. And um, then you just brush it over your your die cut image to get all those extra little bits out look at that how cool is that thanks Megan for asking about that one that is really really cool let's put a little piece of white behind that so you can see the detail in that look at that how cool is that I really like that awesome oh, I've got a couple couple of little spots there that I missed I didn't get out but yeah, that's a really cool one. I like that. And yeah, this one, if you you could use that as a star, or if you did it in say yellow or orange, you could or yellow and then maybe inked it with some orange, some of the uh, pumpkin pie or something. You could use it as a sun as well. So dual purpose that one. Love it. Great. And then to get all the extra little bits of cardstock out of that die, we'll just pop our die in on the. On the foam mats and just rub that with our dye brush get all those extra little bits out and then Bob's your uncle actually he is <laughs> but he gets grump but he gets Robert <laughs> there you go and it's clean yay and you just got to clean your your plates off too and get all those little bits off your plates there we go so yeah thanks for asking about that one Megan that was a good one Everyone's asking such good questions today and um, it's so fun just to play with the products, isn't it? And just see what they can do. You know which other one I'm interested in is um, this one. Hang on a sec. Let me just make some space here on my desk. It's getting a little bit cluttered. This one here, I'll pop this one back on here. Why is it that they never go back the way that they came off? <laughs> There you go. This one here. I was interested to see what this one here looks like. So these ones, of course, they all just lay in, inside of these ones. So you can just fiddle with them or you can use them on their own as well. They are individual dies as well. So they would be really beautiful. So I won't demonstrate those ones because they're pretty self-explanatory. But this one I thought might be nice. So let's have a look at this one. I'll cut a little bit of cardstock to... cutting all these extra little bits of cardstock because I do use them in different projects. Oops. Oh, I did that around the wrong way. Base plate, bottom plate, there we go. And then top plate. There we go. Look at that. You can see the detail on that one. 
So it die cut as well as put the stitching detail in there. Can you see the stitching detail? It's a little bit hard to see probably on camera, but it is there. That's really beautiful. Let's put a little bit of ink on that one so you can see it a bit better. It's a bit hard with the deeper colours. Oh, Dauber's dry. I really need to re-ink this um, ink pad a bit better. And not saying that I would make my stars this colour with the um, with the white ink over the top, but you could. But it's just really to show you the detail, so you can see the detail a bit better. Can you see that now? Yeah, I can see that a bit better now. So really cool. Yeah, that's a really great die set. I love that. Awesome. Oh, I have to start making Christmas cards soon now, everybody. Okay, let's move on to... Now, is that all the pieces in that suite? Yes, that's all the pieces in that suite. So that is a real big bumper suite. Um, and that was the Stars at Night hybrid embossing folder with the... Stars at Night dies and the Stars at Night um, stamp set. So I'll put those all away together. I'll pop this back in the packet so none of those little dies fall off. It's got a lot of dies in that set actually. It's got 14 dies. So that's heaps. Good. All right. Oh. We needed to come back to our star that was glitzed. There we go. So that's got the um, Wink of Stella on there. Can you see the shine? Oh, there. See the shine on there with the Wink of Stella? Really pretty. So, yeah, a bit hard to see on camera, but I think you kind of get the idea. So really beautiful. There you go. And this, this is just stunning. Oh, my goodness. You need this embossing folder. <laughs> you really do. It's gorgeous. All right. Now, we've got a few um, bundles and an additional um, an additional paper pack that are just random ones that I got. Just putting my embossing machine away out of the way. All right, the next one I'm going to show you is the very cute Curved Occasions. Now, it comes with a punch. In, this comes in a bundle. Or you can purchase them separately. Now, remember with any of the bundles, if you purchase them together, you will save yourself 10% rather than purchasing the separate products or starting off purchasing the stamp set and then later on realizing, oh my goodness, I actually decided that I want the punch. Get them together at the beginning and you'll save yourself 10%. <laughs> So this is the um, the Curved Label Punch, and this one is really cool. Um, I've not had, I don't think I've had a Curved Label Punch or anything like that before. So this is really cool because we've got some curve, curvy sentiments in this stamp set, as well as these ones which are straight, but because they're photopolymer, they're pliable, so you can actually curve them if you want to have a curved sentiment. Um, this one's got lots of really fun, um, reminds me of like 80s. Um, I used to roller skate under the disco ball. Um, this reminds me almost of a beetle car, like a, a soft top beetle. It's just a little car. It's not really a, not really a V-dub beetle, but it kind of looks a little bit like that at the front. I know the back is a bit different, but yeah, a little soft top beetle. Um, some flowers, a little cake, just really fun little, um, little stamp set that you can use for lots of different occasions. We've got warm welcome, make today yours, like a typed font. How cool is that? How fun is that? You're great, happy dance, congratulations. Oh, what happy news from us all. Happy birthday, thanks a million and miss you. So lots and lots in there. These are shown at 90%. So the actual products themselves or the actual stamps themselves are quite a bit bigger. So if I show you the car, that's the size of the car. So there you go. Yeah. 
So um, I think the, the curved sentiment is self-explanatory. Just a tip with your curved punches. When you, oh, sorry, not your curved punches, any of your punches. When you get your punches again, sometimes because of the um, punch mechanism, they've got springs and, and working parts inside them. They can get, they can be a little bit oily because they need to be oiled to work well, you know, when you first get them. So just, I wouldn't even use good cardstock. I'd use scrap paper and just give several good punches until because you'll notice when you first start to punch and I'm not sure if you'll see it because I've got ink on the paper as well but there is some oil that has come out of the punch okay that's just when it, that happens when it's new because um, they've oiled it well you know when it's been shipped and stored and all those things so just give several good punches until you're oh, I did that one right off the edge until you're getting nice clean punched shapes with no oily residue and then you're ready to go okay sometimes it might take a few so just use your scrap paper use the stuff that you've stamped you know stamped off on or whatever i normally go punch 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 madly madly until i get it nice and clean because you don't want to um, be punching your, you know, your good piece that you're working with and then think, oh no, there's something wrong with my punch. Yeah. So, yeah, so do several punches, get it nice and clean, get rid of all that oily residue and then you are good to go. Now, the other thing I have seen too with this punch is because you have the, um, the curve, now, I don't know how well I'll do this because this is the first time I've done it. So let's just see. Then if I turn my cardstock over, which way do I do it? No, that'll be the same. That'll be the same. I don't know how they do it. They must have done it on a strip. Oh, it must be on a strip. Okay, hang on. Let's cut a strip. on a strip <laughs> and then if you turn it over and punch the other way you can actually line them up and I don't know if I'm lining these up really well or not because this is the first time I've tried it okay so I didn't line them up perfectly but I'll show you on a darker color but with a little bit of practice you can actually create a curve like that and if you like cards with movement you can create a little track for your car to run along or even maybe your roller skates to run along. And so you can make a moving car like a, um, uh, what do you call it? A, um, like a pull out card. Yeah. I can't think of the name of it. You know what I mean? So yeah, so you can use this to make a little track, but yeah, I obviously need a little bit of practice because that was the first time I've tried it. Um, so yeah, so how fun is that? That would be really, really cool. I saw a sample of um, one with the car and they'd made a, um, yeah, a car that was moving along the little track, which was really, really cute. So there you go. So that's just another another tip with your, your punch. But yes, with any of these sentiments, you can just take them, take these sentiments out, um, these straight ones. And you can kind of bend them if you want to. These are the straight ones, but if you want them bent, you can bend them on the shape of your um, stamp or your punch there. Or you could punch out one of the, the pieces here and use that as your template. But I like this because it can stick there on the block. And then what you can do is grab your stamp, pick it up, and it will stay in the shape. And then when you punch it, Let's do it. Let's do it. I haven't cleaned this one though. Whoops, hang on a minute. Haven't cleaned this one. Let's grab the copper clay we had out before. So I'm not sure how this will punch because I haven't cleaned it, but we'll see. Let's just go. Yeah, it didn't punch very well because I didn't clean it. 
there we go okay and then give that a little wave in the air to dry it open our punch again just slide the button up and release and then we've got a curved sentiment Whee! look there we go how cool is that but then we've also got the sentiments that are actually curved so these ones are actually already curved so we just need to pick them up with our block like that remember again with your um photopolymer sentiments put them down onto some paper first and then pick them up with your block that way let's do let's do a uh, granny apple green sentiment just for adding in a bit of color here we'll go over here ah see i should have cleaned these stamps before i started important to clean your stamps before you stamp with them do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> Give it a little wave. Let the ink dry. And then you've got a really fun curved happy birthday. I didn't punch that right in the center, but you kind of get the idea. Yeah, rushing, rushing. How fun is that? Really cool. So there you go. So there is a little bit with that one. So I'll just clean those stamps straight away not leave that ink sitting on them there we go i love that we can use um these sentiments either straight or curved for the punch as well which is a lot of fun and i'm sure that other people will come up with lots of other great ideas um, for use with this punch there'll probably be some videos that will come out um, some you know lots of other projects lots of other great ideas keep an eye on the stampin up website and i'll oh, sorry the stampin up um youtube channel and the stampin up facebook page as well because um, there'll be lots of great ideas that'll be coming up with those as well okay so that's that one so curved occasions curved occasions and curved label punch okay So this is another bundle. Oh, we'll move these ones away. This is another bundle that I um, purchased, the Merriest Trees Bundle. This one's only shown at 80%. So the trees in this one are actually quite large. This is a photopolymer stamp set. So look how large the tree is. It's really, really big. And it's got the detail as well. It's got the detail stamp. So you've got this, the tree itself, plus you've got the detail. So it's a two-step stamp set. Plus you can add the, um, the decorations on there. You've got a little um, tree trunk. You've got some presents, which that's the present. And then you've got a bow for the present. You've got some stars you can put on the tree, a star for the top, a little um, top-notch bow for the present. And each one of these can be so lots of lots of things on here lots of great sentiments as well some more, some more presents down here too i was going to show you the difference in the size so that's the actual tree size so you can see how much bigger it is than the uh the stamp the image on the front cover it's quite a bit bigger but when you die cut these you can die cut the tree in different sections see how it's got that little gap in between each one very very clever of the designers because you can cut different size trees so if you only want a tree that big if that if that's going to be too big a tree or as i say that that big tree you can just die cut actually let me put that onto a color so you can see that no nope, that's not a good color let's just put it on white okay so you can just die cut the whole tree or you can die cut the different sections of the tree so you can make it different sizes depending on your needs so that's the full tree but if we don't want the full tree if we want a smaller tree so if we if that's too big for what we want we can cut 
we can die cut one, two, three, four layers of the tree and make it a smaller tree. And then you can cut three layers of the tree to make it smaller again, or you can just cut two layers to make it a really little tree. Isn't that so clever? So you've got one, uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, and there's even the very top. If you just want the very top part to make little tiny trees. So you've got five different sized trees in this set. Look, whoop. Actually, it probably goes the other way. It probably goes that way. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So you've got five different sized trees in here. How cool is that? So clever. So, so clever. What I love about this one too is, I'll pop that back in there. With the dies, you've also got um, the basket for underneath the tree. So if you didn't want that little tree trunk, you can use the basket or you might want to put the tree trunk in the basket. You've got um, some decorations for the tree, like some baubles or it could be strung popcorn or beads. Um, they all die cut. Each of those strands die cuts in a single strand. They're not attached. I mean, each one of those strands is attached, but all of those are not attached to each other. You've got um, some stars, some different types of stars. You've got presents. Now, these presents or these little shapes you can use them as other things on other projects as well. They don't necessarily have to be presents. You might like need a little square for something on a card. Or you might need some small rectangles on a card for something. Um, you've got the baubles here. So even though these three baubles, they stamp out in one stamp, um, you've got three. If you stamp multiples of them, you can die cut three sets of them at once. Isn't that awesome? Rather than having to die cut each one of those, Stamp, die cut, stamp, die cut, stamp, die cut. You can do three at a time, which is awesome. And I love this tag. <gasps> How gorgeous is that tag? And you've got a little tag topper as well to put, um, you can put a different color on, it, like on the top of the tag, or you can have it the same color, but it just reinforces it. It's like a reinforcer for the top of the tag. So that is really cool. And these little stars, how cute are they? So yeah, and you can even die cut all the little bows, the little stars. Um, yeah, so, but I love that idea with the, the five-tiered tree. Just so, so clever. So there you go. So that's a standalone um, bundle. That's the Merriest Trees bundle. Oh, hey, Dimity, how are you? Um, do you put too much Wink of Stella on your card? They come out white. Oh, maybe. Sometimes if it flows a bit too quickly, it can get a bit too thick um, and it can look sort of quite silverish white. So, yeah, maybe maybe you're squeezing it a little bit too hard. So what I like to do is with my Wink of Stella is I, I'll grab a scrap here. Actually, I'll use this piece that we embossed earlier. So what I like to do is I like to give just a gentle squeeze at the beginning and then I usually test it on a scrap piece of paper first to check how it's flowing and then I go to colour my um, images. If you, if you squeeze continuously, it will flow very, very quickly and then it will come out really thick and really blobby. Um, you'll lose control of the flow. It will flow way too quickly and it will just... You know, yeah, you'll have no control of the brush. Um, so if that's the case, then just brush it off a little bit onto some scrap paper or crap, scrap cardstock, scrap cardstock, um, and then take it to your project. And just very, yeah, just very light hand. You don't need to press really hard, just very light hand with the brush, just so the brush is just touching on your cardstock. Hopefully those tips will help. Um, yeah, but just yeah, just be careful about not squeezing it too, too much. You just want to squeeze it a little bit at the beginning for it to flow. But test it first. It might already have enough at the tip. You might not even need to squeeze it. And always make sure you give your Wink of Stella a good shake before you use it. And that helps to distribute the um, glitter in the solution. Because you can hear that. There's actually a little ball bearing inside. Hear that? That's to mix up the solution. So just make sure you've got it mixed well as well before you use it. That's another tip as well. And hopefully um, that will help, Dimity. 
So there you go. All right, on to the next one. The next bundle is the gorgeous Winter Owl. I love this one. It is simply stunning. So it's a cling stamp set, which is the red rubber, which has the foam built into it, which is gorgeous. Um, it's got the stickers in there as well that you can add the stickers to your stamps if you like to be able to line them up. And I just love the look of these gorgeous owls. To me, they look like they can be any type of owl you want. Um, but to me, they look like the snowy owls. I love snowy owls. They're so beautiful. Um, you've also got a little moon here, or it could be another another planet. Um, some um, some twigs there. There's some little like um, starry looking, you know, splatter there. But I just think these are gorgeous, and I love the sentiments. May you have time to enjoy the quiet moments of this season. Sending love and warm wishes. And the dies, now the dies are amazing. I haven't had a chance to do any samples or um, have a play with these, but I have seen them used and they are simply stunning. Oh, we are, we're running out of time tonight, so I probably won't show you tonight, but we have got a tree trunk with a hole in it for the, um, the owl to sit in. This circle here is to cut out the moon. So that's, that's not part of the tree. Okay, that's the tree. Then you've got the moon die, which cuts out the moon um, and is also an additional circle die. Um, I was wondering how big this was actually. This is about about two centimeters or just under just under two centimeters. So in inches, it's three quarters of an inch. Is that three quarters? Yep, it's about three quarters of an inch that circle. So that's a handy size to have. Um, you've got some extra branches. So this is a branch and this is a branch. Then you've got the um, dies that cut out each of the owls. Um, there's no actual die to cut out the twigs here, but you've got the standalone branches. But these ones here are the feathers that coordinate with this owl here. So you can attach these feathers underneath this die here actually let's let's quickly just do one let's let's just do one of these so i can show you because this one is beautiful oh he's very stuck come on take him off carefully so i don't damage him and the wings these wings i reckon could even be used as like angel's wings or something like that they're really beautiful All right, I think we can do these quickly on our mini. I'll just pop all this over to the side. And the other last things I'll show you very, very quickly after this, because then we'll have to go because it is getting late. But I think it's great to have a play with the products. It's really, really great to just have a little... So I, I like to call it my playground, my product playground, because you get to have a play with all the products. All right, now let's see. Oh, I've cut that. Oh, no. I can just fit. Oh, I thought I'd cut it too short then. There we go. All right, so we can fit all those on there. Let's hope that they don't move. Before we get this run through, I think we're all good. Oops. Take it through very carefully to just to make sure. There we go. Okay. All right. So We've got some extra little bits in the little feathers in the um, the leaves that punch out. We've got some extra little bits in the snowy owl, so we might actually need. Oh, where's the extra? The other wing is here, caught in the die. Just punch those out. There we go. And the little snowy owl, or the little owl. I want to call it snowy owl because I love snowy owls. They're beautiful. 
So you could use your die brush or you can just take your, take your pick tool and just punch out all those extra little pieces, which I am doing. There we go. Oh, and the eye. Here we go. Oh, there we go. All right. So what you can do is if you want, because the eye and the beak are cut out, you can put a little piece of cardstock behind there to fill that in. So that it's not so that it's not see-through. Sorry, just getting the cardstock off my plate there. All right, and so what you do is you attach, now let me get it the right way around. Um, which way is it, that way? Yeah. So you attach the feathers to the wing. Now I'm not sure if they go on top or underneath. I'm thinking they go underneath the wing like that. So let's do that. Let's grab a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue. Oops. Oh flip my little owl over and we'll just put a little bit of glue just a little bit along the edge of that wing and then attach the wing the wing tips like that look at that isn't that gorgeous and it just gives some extra dimension to the owl I mean, you could probably use him like that, but I don't know. I kind of feel like his wings would be a little bit too short. And I'm sure that there will be lots of other ways to use these wings, but this is just the, um, the most basic, you know, this is the, just one of the ways that you can use them. And then of course I haven't colored him or anything but you can you can color him and then you can put um, I don't have any black handy but if you wanted to put black behind him or even just look if we put him on a piece of Knight of Navy wouldn't it be beautiful with a little bit of sponging or some um, some um, Stampin' Blends or something on him. What's his color? Light gray granite. What color is that? Let's see. A little bit of light gray granite. Um, I don't know where would you put it. Maybe on his on his little speckles. I'll have to look up some um, pictures of some owls so that I can get the right colorations. But I think. The snowy owls might have these little details that are a different color. But anyway, you kind of get the idea. Yeah, and then you can add some detail under his wings here. Some little shadows. Oh, I didn't punch out the bits in his tail. Look, he's got little bits in his tail too. Isn't it just beautiful? Such a beautiful bundle, this one. And you can use him for any occasion. Now also too, he will go really well. Isn't that awesome, Megan? Yeah, so beautiful. Really, really pretty. Can put some detail under his eyes and around his beak. And he's got these little speckles on his head too, like little spots on his head. Yeah, I mean, you could do so much. I'm not, you know, I'm not doing a full, not doing the full detail, but you kind of get the idea. And then he also will go beautifully with this designer series paper that I showed you before. Look, you can be fly flying through the trees. 
How beautiful will that be? You can be flying through the trees in this one. Um, he could be flying through the trees in this one. What else? Let's see. What else have we got in here? Um, oh, this one. He could be flying in the foreground of this one. Isn't that beautiful? So beautiful. I mean, obviously, I would do more detail on him and put some black behind his eyes and his beak and you know, do a bit more colouring, maybe some sponging on him as well, some blending brushes or daubers. He could be, <laughs> Megan said he could be in Hogwarts with the books. He could too. Yeah, he could. Or you could use one of the sitting owls with the books as well. One of This little guy would be cute too with the books. Yeah, that's a really good idea, Megan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Megan said, did I get the whole catalogue? No, I barely touched the tip of the iceberg, actually, Megan. It's just that I'm showing, you know, a lot of detail of each of the ones that I did buy. But um, no, I didn't, I didn't, I got a few stamp sets, actually, but not, not many of the sweets. I only got two of the sweets and um, just a few additional bits and pieces from the catalogue. Yeah. I'll probably get some more as time goes on, but you know, budget. Gotta watch your budget. <laughs> so I gotta pace myself. <laughs> so there you go. So that's the uh, the winter the winter owls bundle. Really beautiful. Um, there was another one that I thought that this owl would go well with as well. Oh, even the um, Even this paper, hang on a sec, let me find it. This one. He could be flying through, he could be flying at night time, like in the foreground of this village as well. Or even just in the night sky. Look, even just in the night sky, he could be flying. Wouldn't that be awesome? So you can use this paper for more than just, like it doesn't have to be Christmas. How cool is that? So there's just a few ideas for you. I'm sure you, all you clever people will come up with lots of other ideas. I mean, any of these papers, there's the desert one as well. Was that the first one that I pulled out? Uh, it's probably the last one in the pack now. Yeah, look at that. I don't know if you'd find, you probably wouldn't find an owl in the desert, but I know, make a nice scene, wouldn't it? He blends in a little bit with the um, the stars, but if you popped him up onto some dimensionals or something, anyway, I think he, he's going to be a lot of that that owl is going to be a lot of fun to play with. Sorry, I just hit the camera with the the paper. Um, yeah. So there you go. But I definitely love him with these papers. I think this one is my favourite. I'm going to definitely do one with this. Look at that. So beautiful. So there you go. All right, got a couple more to show you. Then I'll let you all go. Okay, so I'll pop him in here in the stamp case. I've got a few bits and pieces here and then I've got one more designer series paper to show you. Now this one, of course I had to get because of my marine biology daughter. <laughs> whale watching now these are actually um killer whales so they're not traditional whales um, and whales are part of the porpoise family sorry killer whales are part of the porpoise family just had to have a drink of water um but i just really love them they're, they're beautiful and um anytime there's any sort of sea creatures or you know, I hope some, at some stage they'll bring out dolphins because I would love to have a dolphin set um, for my daughter. Um, but just really beautiful. And we've got some waves there. We've got a, um, like a, um, you know, hilly sort of, what do you call it? Like a cliff um, area there around the water, stars, moon, clouds. Just a really, really lovely set. It's a cling stamp set. And... Um, they're actually not huge 
um, stamps. I think this is, is this stamp showed at 100%? Yeah, this is actually 100%. So that is the size of what you see on the front cover is the size of the, um, the images. And what I love about these is because they are killer whales, killer whales are black and white. So you just stamp them in black ink and you're done. So you don't need to color them or anything. I mean, you could color the, you know, the um, landscape a little bit and things like that. Oh, Megan said she saw killer whales at the San Diego, San Diego Zoo. She said they're amazing. Oh, wow. That would have been amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there you go. So I just thought that was a really lovely set. Um, no sentiments in this set. So you can put your own sentiments with this one, which is fantastic. Um, oh, Megan said, I haven't ordered yet so far. I've had, uh, have one bundle and some ribbon. Yes. Oh, I've got more ribbon to show you too. <laughs> Which ribbon did you get, Megan? Um, there's some really beautiful ribbons in this mini catalog. So, okay. So that's another standalone stamp set. And then I really like a good sentiment stamp set. So I'm all for getting the sentiment stamp sets. So this one is called, um, So Sincere. And this one is also a Million Sales Achiever stamp set. I actually can't remember who this one was from. Uh, let me just have a look in the catalogue and I'll just see. Do, 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 do. Um, mm, 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 mm. Page 47. Page 47. This one was Sandy Hancock. Sandy Hancock was a million sales achiever. She um, helped to design this stamp set. So lots of great sentiments for lots of different um, occasions. You're in my mind and uh, in my, sorry, you're in my heart and prayers just for you. So very proud of you. We've got a vertical happy birthday, which often comes in handy. And we don't have many of those vertical sentiments at the moment. Hope you're feeling better soon. So thankful for you. Hope your day is a happy one. Um, your kindness is so appreciated. Be grateful for what you have. Be proud of who you are. Love that. And just love spending time with you. And knowing you brings joy to my heart. I just think they are really beautiful sentiments for uplifting others. And um, yeah, I mean, obviously, hope you're feeling better if somebody's not feeling well. Just really, really lovely. It's a cling stamp set. So they are the red rubber, which I love in a sentiment because they stamp out beautifully. Um, you, It is a good idea to put your stickers on these ones though um, so that you can make sure you line them up really well. So there you go. Uh, okay. We have got some... Ah. Um, you love the So Sincere stamp set, Dimity? Yeah, you think you'll buy that one. Yeah, it's really great to have um, a beautiful sentiment stamp set because, you know, that's what we always need sentiments, don't we? Now, these are the deckled circle dies. As you know, we have the deckled rectangles, but these are circles and there are 14 dies in this one. But look how huge this one is. It's almost like a bread and butter plate. <laughs> It's enormous. It'll be great for scrapbooking, memory keeping, or you can perhaps even, I had an idea of doing a semicircle card. If you cut a full piece that size and then folded it in half and had it like a rocking card or yeah, all sorts of ideas. I'm sure there are lots and lots of ideas that you can come up with. Now this piece is a full card front. This is an Australian size full card front once you've you know, pretended you've folded your card. Um, so let's see the size of these dies on a full card front. I haven't done this yet because it's new. Okay, so that's, that's the largest one. Look how big that is. Isn't that so cool? And they're deckled. So you've got that, you know, jagged edge around the edges. Okay, so as I said, great for the scrapbookers. Great for um, 3D as well, if you like to do off the page projects. Okay, that's the second largest. So we're still not within the uh, the size of the, the cardstock yet. These ones are definitely going onto magnetic sheets because these are just going to be too hard to keep putting on and off this sheet. 
Um, third largest. Still not yet within. That. Great for square cards. If you love doing square cards, um, these would be great for on the front of a square card. I used to only make square cards. I went through a, a big phase of only doing square cards. I loved doing square cards. I don't do them so much now because Stampin' Up! doesn't have square envelopes at the moment that are large enough to fit my square cards. Um, so I tend to keep with the rectangle mostly. Sometimes I do squares, but not very often. Okay, that's the uh, fourth largest and we're still, still um, not fitting within the card front yet. Fifth largest, getting a little bit closer. And I think we're going to be down to the sixth largest. There we go, sixth largest. And that's just fitting within a standard card front. That is um, Australian card sizes. So ours are a little bit shorter, oh, sorry, taller and narrower than the American size. American size is... Uh, shorter and wider so there you go and then you've got all of those ones below it for our size cardstock so you've got one two three four five six seven eight nine sizes that will then fit on this the australian and english um card size so how cool is that that's heaps that's so many and as i said these are the larger ones other projects off the page projects square cards scrapbooking albums yeah hey jenny how are you going are you watching on replay we're actually still live <laughs> it's a really really long one today because we've been having a um new product um what did i call it playground we've been having a play with some of the brand new products that are coming out in the new mini catalog next month um oh you got the navy and white ribbon with the silver trim oh lovely oh you have it in your cart beautiful um julie said they'll be great for bunting for events oh, yes that's another great idea julie for bunting yeah because you could um die cut a big piece like that and then fold it in half couldn't you and have it like the semicircle bunting great idea wow yeah i'm sure that's um so many people are going to come up with so many great ideas for that but there you go so, yeah, so what was that? That was the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth smallest, I have to remember, or one, two, three, four, five, sixth largest. Sixth largest and down fit onto our card bases. So there you go. So that's the deckled, um, the deckled circle dies. I hope that Stampin' Up! keep those around for a really, really long time. I think, I hope that they will. I cross my fingers that they will. Surely they'd be popular. I think they would be. Um, if they're popular, they'll keep them around. So buy them, people. Buy them. We want them to stick around. All right. Um, we have got some ribbon and bling to show you. I've got the adhesive backed glittered sequins. I think these are from one of the suites, which I don't have. Um, one of the ones with the bears. There's some really cute ones with polar bears in it. Um, but these are really pretty. Look at those colours and the sparkles. And the great thing is they are adhesive backed. So they are already done for us. Um, the colours, don't quote me, but I think it was granny apple green or was it old olive? I think it might have been old olive, but they look more like granny apple green. Um, white and was it balmy? I think it might have been balmy blue can't remember but anyway in the catalog they are in the catalog they are really really pretty but they are a little bit glittery so just beware they are a little bit glittery there's a little bit of glitter in the packet so i think uh they might be a little bit glittery to handle so just beware adhesive backed glittered glitter sequins then we have got i love these ones these are so pretty the faceted gems trio pack and these come in smoky slate, um, clear or silver, can't remember. And, oh, Coastal Cabana? No, Pool Party? 
one of them. Coastal Cabana might have been. Lost Lagoon, maybe. <laughs> one of those. <laughs> anyway, they're gorgeous and they're um, really um, faceted. Yeah, they're very texturized. We've had these faceted ones before and I've always really loved them. These are just in a single size, but they're a medium size, which is really good. They're not too big, not too small. So they're beautiful. Then we've got some ribbons. I've got the, this is the white iridescent ribbon and it is very shiny and sparkly. Can you see that on the, if I put it on the blue, on the Night of Navy, it's throwing off a lot of pinks and blues. If I go that way, maybe you'll see it better in that, that angle. It's hard to, hard to work out which angle you're going to see the color better. It's really hard to see it, to show it on camera. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so it's throwing a lot of blues and um, pinks, just depending which angle you th put it on. It actually looks really good on the, the um, Night of Navy. Um, it's a little bit of a stiffer ribbon. If I hold it on my finger, you'll see that it's a little bit, little bit stiffer. Can still tie a nice bow with it, though, I think. Um, I was playing with this one the other day. It does tie a nice bow get that nice and tight yep I haven't got my my loops even but there you go so it makes a really pretty bow quite a large bow um, it is 1.3 centimeters wide or half an inch so it's a little bit wider but yeah really pretty ribbon and then we've got This one here, which is a very, very sheer ribbon. So it's actually called sheer ribbon. It's silver and white sheer ribbon. So almost like an organza, but it's more sheer even than organza, I think. But really pretty. I'll show you that on the Knight of Navy. Okay, so it's on the Knight of Navy. And then if I show you that on white, it almost vanishes except for the silver trim. Really pretty ribbon, yeah. So that's gorgeous. I love anything with a bit of metallic in it too. Really, really pretty. Um, now the designer series paper I was going to show you. Last one. This is the last product. This is the Walk in a Forest, Walk in the Forest 12 by 12 designer series paper. And this one is the Making a Difference product in the mini catalogue, which means that money, um, sorry, some of the money um, from this, the purchase of this stamp set will actually go towards um, an organisation. And what's the, let me remember, I'll just open up the catalogue to have a little looky off camera here. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. What is the project this year? Um, with with each purchase of a walk in the park, a walk in the forest designer series paper, we'll donate four dollars and twenty five Australian dollars to support organisations dedicated to spreading cheer and providing support to those in need. We hope you'll join us in making a difference this festive season. So this paper is twenty one dollars seventy five Australian dollars and four dollars. 25 of that is going to be going to those organizations which is really awesome now those tree dies i showed you before they die cut these trees so how cool is that they coordinate with these trees um this isn't part of the um part of a suite this is a standalone paper and you might miss it it's at the beginning of the catalog it's actually on page um so when you for those of you who are customers and don't yet have a catalog, on page five, you'll see it, but don't blink because you'll miss it because that's the only place that it features is on page five. Um, so make sure you look for it. We've got these cute little brown bears. Now, there's a bear punch. Um, there's a, a suite that has bears, has polar bears in it, snow, all of that, and there's a bear punch that coordinates with the stamp set. This is the same bear, but this is a brown bear. Um, and the punch will actually punch out these bears as well. So coordinates with the tree dies, coordinates with the bear punch. So super cool. Um, then we've got some sort of um, 
arty looking trees there with the balmy blue background. We've got some beautiful um, holly berries for our um, Christmas cards. We've got some more bears with the more of a blue background. Um, now this one is the reverse of this one. So this one will punch out with the punch. This one is the reverse. So I don't think you can punch that one out. I don't know, unless you're really clever and you can line it up back to front. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, some beautiful pine cones and um, yeah, branches and things for your Christmas cards. Really beautiful. We've got some stripes there. You can use that for your Christmas cards or for different occasions. Then if we turn the paper over, we've got some trees, we've got some snow, we've got some beautiful stripes, we've got some um, fern, or not fern, um, fur, like fir tree leaves, some more snow, and some more arty trees. So really fun paper, really beautiful, definitely worth um, purchasing this one. It'll coordinate with a lot of our other products as well as some of the money from the purchase of this goes to helping those um, in need, which is a great cause. So um, yeah, so there you go. I do have I do have one product I didn't show you, but I might save it for another live because we've been going really long. It's the Abundant Beauty Decorative Masks and these are layering masks. So there are some, um, I'll show you quickly, but I won't demo it. I'll just, um, but I do want to demo this on a live, but probably not right now. It's too late now. <laughs> um, so you've got a few dies in here which are sort of standalone dies. So you've got some snowflakes, really beautiful. So these are great to use with your blending brushes, um, your sponge daubers, that sort of thing, your, your techniques. Um, then we've got some beautiful leaves, leafy background. You've got some um, houndstooth. So that's really great for lots of different. So that one and that one can be used for lots of different occasions. In fact, this one would go really well with um, Amy's stamp set. The, um, the autumn one, which I forget the name of. Uh, autumn leaves. That would go really well with the autumn leaves. Um, one as well yeah and this can be used for lots of different things now the other and this one's a little bit bigger than the others which is really interesting so it's quite a bit bigger then we have a set of dies that are oh, sorry um, masks that are layering masks that you can make these beautiful flowers or beautiful sunflowers but each of these overlay to give you I'll show you them individually first. So you've got the sunflowers, you've got the leaves, you've got the centre of the flowers, and then you've got the detail of the centre of the flowers. So when you lay them all up and they're numbered and they've got a little notch so you know which is the right way up and how they're going to sort of line up and they're numbered. So it tells you the order as well that you do them in. Um, but yeah, so they'll be lots of fun. So you'll know which way they go up. It doesn't matter if you do them that way or that way. The number is printed on this side, but um, yeah, as long as you, and if you do them in order, you'll be able to line it all up. So that's really, really fun as well. Yes, you can also use embossing paste. That's correct, Megan. Thank you for reminding me. With these dies, uh, sorry, these um, decorative masks as well, or as we used to call them, stencils. They're now called decorative masks. These ones are a lot thicker, I think, than the previous ones we've been having. These white ones, they feel like a lot thicker and sturdier, which will be really great. Um, might need another ribbon share, Megan, you think? Yes. And somebody was asking before about an embellishment share as well. So if I get enough interest for a ribbon share and an embellishment share or um, both together or separate, um, I might I might run one. I've got my paper share first, so I'm running that um, at the moment. Uh, I've just opened up registrations for that for the paper share. We've got a pay, um, DSP share and specialty paper share. Um, but yeah, ribbon and embellishments definitely could be um, happening as well down the track, if I have enough interest. <laughs> um, 
What else did I miss? Um, oh, that's the one. Oh, that's the one you were talking about. But now you've seen the other one. You might need that too. Oh, the ribbons. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. Lots of fun, Megan. So there you go. So we might play with these in another live. In fact, I might actually do a Facebook live with a card based on these. Um, so I won't take the time to demonstrate those now. I'll save that for another day. But there you go. So lots and lots of fun things. And that is only, as I said, that is only the tip of the iceberg. There are so many more beautiful um, products in the catalogue. Um, now, before I go, let me tip the camera up so that I can um, finish talking to you face to face. So bear with me. I'll cover up the camera while I tip the camera. And I'll just do my little transition here. And up we go. Oops, hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Bear with me. I'm getting there. There we go. Flip, flip. Okay, I had to stand up that time. <laughs> well, I actually, I usually do stand up, but yeah, I stood up to do my light too because that light always falls down. There we go. All right, so... Thank you all so much for joining me. That was a lot of fun playing with all of those new products. And you can see I <laughs> brought my, my die cutting trolley over to um, make it a bit easier. Um, I've got stuff everywhere now, so I'll spend the next half an hour tidying up. But that was so much fun. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope that um, that really excited you about the new catalogue. Now, remember that um, if you would like one of these new mini catalogues um, or the annual catalogue as well, I have registration forms for those. Uh, the links will be in the description of this video once I finish filming. Um, when I upload this over to YouTube, I will put the links there as well. And the paper share, remember the, to the paper share? Got my paper share coming up, so you can register for that as well. I'm not taking the payments just yet. I will let you know when the payments are due. Um, the information about that is on the registration form, but it's just a little bit early to take the payments yet, but you can register to make sure that you um, are in on, on the paper share. Um, and remember too that I've got my Botanical Prints card class. The registration for this one closes tomorrow. So if you want to get in on that one, then definitely register by the end of tomorrow. If you are outside of Australia and you would like to participate, you can purchase the PDF um, tutorial as well there's an option there for that the link as well will be in um the link basically it's, it's called link tree and there's all my links are in there so you just click on that link that one link and it'll open up all my other links and then you navigate to where you want to go it, it's described there so you'll have no trouble um finding your way around remember we've got the kit sale as well and i'm looking at putting on a kit event um a kit evening on the 9th of september so if you would like to participate in that, purchase a kit in my online store and you can come along for free. Um, and to get to my store, again, it'll be in the links. So check that out there. Um, but we would love to have you come along to that. I just had to postpone that. I was planning to do it at the end of the month, but had to postpone it a little bit because I've had lots of other things going on. And my team retreat coming up on Saturday. So that's super exciting. Um, so Sammy and I will say farewell for today. Um, thank you so much. If you missed me talking about my, my brooch and my earrings at the beginning of my live, feel free to go back and see that. And I explained about those. So this is one of my, my new passions is wearable art. <laughs> uh, very, very new. I just discovered them last week and am hooked now all of a sudden. Last week, week before. Might have been week before. Anyway, very recently. Um, but thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you have fun with these new products. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'll be designing some new projects with these products and um, those videos will be coming up over the next few months. Um, I'll be back live again next Monday uh, at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern 
daylight no eastern standard time what are we standard time at the moment <laughs> australian eastern standard time um that's when i'll be here but uh the replay will be up for anyone who missed it and again if yeah if you don't like all the chitter chatter um on any of my videos feel free to fast forward but sometimes you miss exciting information so it's always good to uh to check that out too you can have it playing in the background when you're doing something else doing the dishes or ironing or something boring like that <laughs> um yeah oh you're welcome megan uh yes i am definitely going to have so much fun playing with all of these new goodies i can't wait i've got so many ideas my mind is just going wow <laughs> So anyway, I look forward to seeing you all again next week. I'm very excited to see my team on Saturday for our full day team retreat um, in person for a great day of crafting. And um, Fee, Amanda and I have got some amazing projects for you all. So it's going to be fantastic and lots of fun and games and prizes and all sorts of things. So it's going to be fun. All right. Well, have a great rest of your week, everybody. And I look forward to seeing you all somewhere in cyberspace or here again next Monday. Take care, everyone, and happy crafting. Bye.